Okay, this is what I wanted. <laughs> I want a black screen. We are in game. So welcome everybody to the first game of this one versus one tournament. Uh, we're not going to be casting Flicky to begin with, unfortunately. We're going to start with Pigeon Wrench versus Arrival of the Birds. We're sure to catch some Flicky later on. Flicky is an awesome player to follow. Always some fun, fun strategies. For now, it's going to be Pigeon Wrench versus Arrival of the Birds. This is uh, the Battle of the Birds. The very first match of this 1v1 tournament. The map, Canyon. We see here Pigeon Wrench going, starting with an expansion from the get-go. His opponent opting for some early for some early aggression or maybe just wants to get the pirate camps on the map always a good idea to get those pirate camps as you know it gets your third resource gets your abilities up and perhaps just stops your opponent from getting them now it could be a bit unusual because generally the person you see doing that is the player playing Zol. as Zol is really the one that you want to level up your immortal it's it's an immortal that's a bit different from others where you have a you have a, a, a unit that you want to level up. And here comes the first battle. The first blood's going to come in. The scouts are fighting, and Rival the Birds just barely loses that battle. Pigeon Ranch gets the first blood. Deep on the other side. You can try again. Is Pigeon Ranch going to get both battles? It's going to be close. They'll all have to be careful. Ooh, good job on Rival the Birds and winning one of the scout battles. <sighs> yeah, exactly, Ty. Birds want a good, clean fight. Keep your feathers out at all times. Nothing below the below the wings. And here we're going to see where they place their initial scouts to try and figure out how the opponents are going to attack. From this position, Pigeon Ranch can see this small, uh, the choke point here if his opponent wants to go this straight. Also see if the camp is being attacked. And if, if you won't be able to see if he goes from the backside here. And Pigeon Ranch gets his first units out. Arrival heading straight for I cores. Okay, that's interesting. I cores are anti light units. As soon as they hit the field, they're going to be a great counter to these bone stalkers. Uh, so, expecting his opponent to go bone stalkers, he sees them with his scout as well. So, I cores are perfect, a perfect match against this. Of course, expanding after that, he just wants to get his units out as soon as possible. It's going to make it hard for Pigeon Wrench to uh, deal with. Of course, Pigeon so far just wants the first camp as soon as possible, get his Zol Pyre up, and as soon as he gets enough, enough Pyre, he's going to be able to start uh, doing some damage. Okay, here come the Icors. Dangerous. He got the Pyre camp before. Who gets the first blood? And the voice lines are just so fun. The they are, they are made, so if you have Zol versus Mala playing, you're going to have Mala, Zol talking about how she is uh, the daughter of Zol, uh, Zol is the daughter of Mala, and how she needs to take her own path, and Mala wants none of that. Mala isn't, uh, isn't the nicest mom, but that's okay, she's here at the fight for power and, you know, destroy her daughter and all her hopes and dreams. Bunch of Icor, Rob the Birds, able to have map control on Pigeon's side. Pigeon has a bit of an advantage economy-wise. That might not be enough. Pigeon setting his scout and wants to make sure his opponent did expand. As sees that, he'll be quite happy and we'll see what he transitions into next. So far, just basic units, nothing too unusual. Uh, Pigeon updating his, uh, upgrading his base to have the full amount of, uh, the full amount of workers here. Hey, Flicky, nice to see you. Thought you had a game going. <laughs> Rob the bird getting as much power as he can. Getting double camps. Honestly, from this early game, it seems like a rival has a bit of a lead, getting the better tech. Of course, it all comes down to how you use your units. And Pigeon heading for another power camp. They're, they're both just facing themselves quietly here. And this is an interesting camp. It's different from the other ones. It's not the one gets the last kill. It's the one that's on. Yeah, okay. Pigeon, <laughs> Pigeon sees his opponent coming. He wants the pyre. Whoever stands on the pyre when it get, appears gets the pyre here, so. Arrival was trying to be cheeky and getting it from his opponent. Could have been a fun move. Fast third expansion from Arrival. Pigeon might be able to punish this now he has his calls out. It's going to be a good strong timing attack. He's not known the third base is here yet. So we'll see where he decides to attack. Even if he goes for a natural, it might be hard to defend with only Icors. Strong timing attack coming from Pigeon. Free. Yeah, there's four for production values worth of units. For his opponent, he's only at 30, 30 supply versus 60. It's going to be a hard fight, especially if Zakal is there to tank for the Icors. Pigeon might have found the perfect timing attack to beat his opponent, especially if the, with the third base coming down for arrival. A little bit greedy, maybe a little too greedy. Let's see if he's able to defend this. He has enough power to get some stuff going. 
Pidgeon on your side has not upgraded Zol, so Zol won't be a big difference maker in this fight. And here comes the battle. Slowly coming in, gets the first kill. Zoe comes in. He wants uh, he wants the level ups to come in quickly. Level two already on Zoe. Gets the first base. The other side, there's gonna be the Icors harassing, getting a few worker kills, and most of them at least. But Pigeon doesn't care. He's going for the base entirely. He's going for throat. He's going for the juggler. Four of those Icors won't be enough to kill everything. They can attack. They can kill a few of those. Oh wow! The, the workers did a decent amount of damage. Killed one of the Icors. Almost destroyed the other one. And Pigeon just wants to cancel his opponent's base entirely. Units are coming out for rival, slowly but surely. Oh, Junelli is your, your Santa's mom, right? Happy to have you. Santa's gonna be a Santa's a great favorite of this tournament. Can't wait to see him play later. And here comes the battle. There's a red harvest coming in from uh, from a rival. Truly gonna help in this fight. Is it gonna be enough? Is the big question. Hunting ground coming down for Bridget. Hoping it can make the difference, but it takes a while to activate. Rival wisely steps back. He still has a second base right now. He still has another base. He can retake his his real natural eventually. Uh, but for now, just heading out onto the other bases. It was a good. It was a great attack from Pigeon. Just gotta be careful. As now he's behind in supply. Oh. Yeah, hunt a great hunting around there. Another Zoe coming in. He's level up for already. Only six minutes of the game. Zoe is leveling up. Getting more powerful. Every single kill she gets makes her so much more potent. Level five. What battles from Pigeon Wrench. Getting his immortal up and up and at it. And the battle continues. At this point, Arrival should be able to defend with his reinforcements. Uh, but Pigeon's not done reinforcing. He got a third base of his own, so Pigeon in a commanding lead in this game. Arrival. Huh. Okay, it seems like we have a bit of a break here. Pigeon going to explore the map, going to get his pirate back up and running. Uh, he wants more pirates, so he can summon as many as as he can. It's enough for the great hunt here. And Arrival wants none of it. He's gonna set. He's gonna send out his units and attack the next part of the map. Go back into harassment. That's one of the best ways to get get into the game. You just harass until you can get until you ha until you force your opponents either head back home so you can re-expand. Great place from Arrival. Unit, yeah, pigeon posturing on the top of the map, and now he sees the units coming. He wants to defend. He has Frieza Calls here. Frieza Calls should be more than enough. He's trying to catch them, pincer them in. But Rival doesn't care. He's just hitting back with his I-Course. He's gonna lose one in the process. He's controlling. He's taking the Pirate Cannon in the northwest, so is northeast, so isn't looking at his I-Course. Gonna lose one. Lose the second one. Still only has two left for harassing. Now it's more about the Mass Hunters. Mass Hunters, as soon as he gets offering, they're gonna be quite potent against these opponents. Okay, good on arrival, taking back his natural, it's three base to two bases, it's a good lead for, for Pigeon still. He did. He was able to save his workers though, that's a good save, these are expensive. At 50 aloe each, you don't want to rebuild them if you don't have to. No. Yeah, Zoe is ready to be summoned so many times right now. She is ready to jump into any fight and just kill his opponent. Uh, scouts being sent in the center here. He set his rally point here so he can always keep an eye on his opponent going for the middle path. And Pigeon finds his opponent's third base. And Rival quickly moves away his workers. Great move. Doesn't want to lose him. He's going to try and flank him on the back while he's while Pigeon is busy attacking the base. But that's not enough units. Pigeon knows it. He sends in Zoe on top of it. Red Harvest comes in. So a lot of Keto are going to help out with the fight. And Pigeon... Oh... Pigeon heads are bit the wrong way. A lot of Keto are going to come in. It's going to be a great fight for a... For Mala, or at least just enough. But there's so many units on Pigeon Ranch side. How can he do it? Is it going to be enough? Blood will also coming down. That's going to get destroyed immediately by Pigeon. And Pigeon keeps pushing. Oh, this is uh, not looking for for a rival. And he's going to call. It's going to be first game for for Pigeon. GG on both sides. Great first game this tournament. Okay. Scouts heading out. Scouts ready to battle it out. They are heading everywhere, ready to fight for the pirate camps. <laughs> okay, um, they're not going to intercept each other, so that's nice from Doug Yao. He went for a, sm a slightly slower path. Honestly, it doesn't really matter. Well, they both did that, actually. They went for a different path, and Doug Yao is actually going to arrive a bit before his opponent. But they're both going for early expands here. It's going to be Zol versus Mala. Uh, Santa's main immortal is generally not Zol. But... Uh, 
he he's been playing her a lot this weekend. He's been experimenting, getting her uh, started. If anyone wants to learn how to play as well, it's going to be pretty interesting to watch Santa's strategies here. I've I've seen a bit of it and I kind of like it. On the other side, Doug Gao is playing Mala. Mala is a bit more standard. You're going to have her fun abilities. We're just going to follow her around as a. I'm curious what type of strategy they come up with this time around. First scout kill goes. Oh, Doug Gao got the first scout kill. That's crazy. Or did not spawn. Yeah, it spawned. Ripper from the Gao getting that first scout kill. <laughs> you want to get that as early as possible. I'm guessing Santa already has uh, a rally point, and if you place it right near it, you're going to be able to attack a few times before anything happens. That's pretty smart. Santa's first scout placement ready to just check for the expansion location. Uh, often it's nice to check the path and see if this is this power cap will be taken. First bone stalker is coming out from Santa. Generally, something Santa likes to do is to use the hunting round. Yeah, Santa likes his bone stalker frenzies. What he's like doing lately is putting a hunting round here. So once you hunting round not being too expensive, he can put the hunting round then. Can start killing the units and get his first, uh, get some free pirate, uh, get get some a uh, free zo level ups that way. Seems like he do it when he only has free pirate, but the effects are not happening. So we'll see if if Mala ends up uh, leveling up here. Okay, I'm going for. Okay, Santa did not go for that. He's going for very early, aggressive. Aggressive, uh, aggressive uh, for a Grove Guardian. That's impressive. That's going to be interesting. Yeah, Doug got trying to get it out, uh, take out his HP as fast as possible. But only for remaster hunters won't be enough. Santa coming off his Bone Stalkers. The Bone Stalkers in the early game are much faster. Uh, the Icors can deal with them pretty well, but there's so many Bone Stalkers at this point. It's going to be hard. Hard. There's two. Okay, they both have the same amount, but a free mass stalker. Free mass stalkers are going to go down. Yeah, the first one gets popped by the toothpicks of her bone stalkers. In the name of the God tree, and Santa has a very strong forward position here. From that forward position, he can heal up his units and get ready to attack into his opponent. Yeah, focus frying down one of the I cores. Ooh, stop the hunting round. That's great. Santa wants those hunting rounds to level up his Zol. And with the hunting round get gone, he won't be able to uh, just get it as fast. With that many I cores, it'll be very hard for Santa to deal with them. He needs a perfect arc. Or just get them while he's not looking. Instead, he's going for this early pirate camp on the right side. So I can get enough pirate. He wants to get enough so he can summon his old. One of the following fights. And behind this, no one's taking a third, which is, is pretty standard, honestly. At this, at the higher levels, often they stay at two bases for a pretty long time. They try to get a lot of units out because you, you might just die if you don't get enough units in the early stages. Okay, invisible units try and jump in on top of them. And Santa, yeah, okay, so Santa did a few. Uh, you can see here at 1700, that means he used a few uh, uh, Efer. I forget what the name is, but he got a 300 worth of Efer here. So with 300 Efer, he could get the Bone Stalker upgrade, which gives them a double attack once invisible. We know they're here, uh, so they do have double damage on visibility. Oh, using workers to kill towers, I forgot about that. That used to be a note trick where you could send two, ta two of them to kill some towers. And then you get 10 power for each tower you kill. And that's pretty good in those in the early stages of the game to get that fast, fast pyre. Like if he kills two of them with workers for only 50 alloy in the early game, it's generally seen as worth it. Yeah, see, he sends a lot of workers there for a pretty unusual play. We don't see it that often. Santa trying to innovate with stuff like sending workers out on the map to deal with stuff like that. Side Doug Gal just wants to make sure his opponent didn't take a third. He didn't take a third either. He is running with his... Uh, I really need to identify better the, the units, the, the buildings of Aru. I think that may be upgrades. Yeah, hitting up with both the Blood Well and just being at the Grove Guardian. Yeah, 100% Life Forger. Oh, Life Forger! Nice to see you. I hadn't seen you. Uh, too bad you. I haven't seen you play much in this uh, playtest weekend. Hope uh, you have some time to play today. It's pretty fun. Santa jumping in there. And ooh, 
Red Harvest comes in and Santa's gonna have to pull back immediately. He does not want to find out. Oh, but he does. He's getting out the Zol, getting a few extra kills. He's gonna try and level up Zol to level 4, but he's trying to sniper. Dugal wasted a lot of shots trying to snipe Zol, and Zol lives through it. Means she'll be able to spawn again, and Dugal just lose that position. Santa's gonna be able to get this tower for himself, and perhaps even... Uh, it's gonna take about 15 seconds, I think, for the camps to restart and get them back. Yeah, I love the I, I love the the Efer surge just being able to get that early pirate early Efer a bit more a bit more advanced. So I don't expect like newer players to do it, but as soon as you want to really get your build orders tight, the Efer surge is so beautiful. Such a great great idea, great design choices. Hey, Flicky, that means you already won your game, or I guess we did start this game pretty late as well, so it's possible you finished early. Okay, Dugout still got that power cap. Santa went for the wand, right? And at this point with the incubator, Santa's still still playing cheeky at this pace, but Santa right now as we go seems to be really just going around the map and getting as much bone as much activity everywhere. He's putting down the Yeah, exactly. He's gonna he's getting the underground so he gets some free levels for Zol just by staying there. And it's not spoilers vision if I'm not gonna watch your game anyway. It's over. <laughs> oh, Bloodbound's coming in. Hopefully Bloodbound got, got cheated and didn't head back. Oh, okay, so Santa is gonna be gonna be building some omnivores on his side over here, and he'll be teleporting them to, to the forward position. As I saw the abilities of the Ardo to teleport units on the other side. Santa going in. Another red harvest coming in from the Gal. Santa running away. He knows he can't take this. Zoe is spawned, but she's being chased down. It's gonna be killed before she can do too much of it. Stays on level 4, and this position is going to be is starting to be overtaken by the gal. Does Santa have anything in the back pocket after this position is taken over? Okay, yeah, run away from the, those units. The expensive one needs to stay back. Royal Guardian taken down. Omnivore is going to be taken down as well. Not going to be much left here. As uh, Dugout was able to break out of his division, vaulting his third base. Santa already has his mining, so Santa's definitely slightly ahead still despite losing that fight. No, wait, is he ahead? Okay, no, that's a lot of units behind. The supply is very low. Economically, Santa's still ahead. Uh, Army-wise, he's in a bit more of trouble. I like the composition here, the Icor, some incubator. Bit more advanced units. Santa, oh. Okay, forget what I said. Santa is going for Godphages. Santa is going for the big... <laughs> Santa decided to go for the big AoE attack. The problem with that is that they're not that strong, like... They're very powerful, but in a straight up fight, he might be in a bit more trouble there. So we'll see how he deals with it. Dugout coming for it, killing the first units. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a meme o'clock for Santa. Uh, yeah, sending the omnivores here to help defend this one. Godphage is out. Uh, Dugout's strategy now has to be to jump on the Godphage if he can. Santa's. We don't see that Santa has that many units. He might have a few here. Dugout sees it coming. Both were first kills. Get a bit of mala, get some red harvest out, get some keto to help defend this. The Santa have enough. The Godfage is gonna get sniped down quickly. Uh, Zoe comes out to help defend from Santa, but Santa does not have enough at this point. Santa's gonna try and defend, but his units get taken out. This dugout doing it, going for the upset in the early stages, gonna get a third base, and Santa is uh, on the ropes right now. Dugout went later for his expansion, but does not matter. He has a bigger army. Santa. Santa has the faster reinforcements. Dugout has to be careful of how much he's willing to commit here. Santa pushing forward with his Bone Stalkers. He gets a few more kills of the retreat. Bone Stalkers are faster than those. Yeah, they're definitely faster. He can run a bit further, further away. Trying to get the units. Trying to lock down the units there. And yeah, we see the Blood Plague really taking down a lot of HP of the units. A lot of those units have only their overgrowth left. Their shields is all that's left. So only a few shots to die. Santa using the higher level spells to survive. And uh, Santa lost his third, so great fight from the gal. Uh, we're gonna see, have to see how the next one goes. With the Grove Garden here, it'll be much harder for the gal to break through here. Hey, Atlander, nice to see you. Uh, Santa is going for a go very fast God Phage here. Trying to do some damage to the opponent. It's gonna be hard for uh, the gal to keep forcing forward. The gal might be. Yeah, I like the, the scout here. He's gonna be able to see his opponent coming in. He has good vision on the left side between the pyre, pyre vent and everything, but the out. Yeah, okay, just gonna try and make his uh, units a bit stronger, a bit bigger. Going for the tower core here, it's never was transformed. It's good for Santa, gave some vision for a while. And at this point, poor underspines. <laughs> poor underspines there, did nothing wrong. Uh, units on the backside. 
Ooh, the Ancient is out. The Ancient can make a big difference in the next fight. 200 power. Is this going to be the big Ancient fight? Does Santa have enough to contest it? Big early lead there. Uh, Santa has a lot of spells. Yeah, exactly. The Blood Plays are coming down. The units are going to die. Santa does not want his opponent to get it. If he gets it, it's so close. Dugout just focus fire down. He gets the Ancient. Gets 100 power from it. It's going to be a lot of big spells coming in. But Santa behind us went for Dugout's third. Is 100 power worth losing your third base economy? That's a quarter of your economy. Yeah, still a quarter of your economy in this, in this phase of the game. Uh, it's a lot of economy. Dugout going for Reign of Blood. Heading for his opponent's base. Blood's going to spill out everywhere onto the map. All the units HP is going to be regenerated. More mana for spells. Santa's going to have to abandon his Grove Guardian at the very least as he's out of position. All that was there was the snipers of the third base. Santa loses position on the map. Dugout moving forward. Sending his units in reinforcements to Santa's third. Does he have enough to take it? He has to be careful here. Santa's already ready for a pincer attack. And get a god phase from the back. He was so heavy damage here. We see the units explode just from the god phase. But if Dugout can get on top of it, it's going to be a great kill, but he can't quite get there. God phase, unfortunately, do seem to miss. Uh, yeah, we see uh, the Red Sears had to use some of their own blood to cast spells. One of the big things about R, you can cast, and if you don't have any mana left, you can use your blood, your HP, to cast the spells. One of the big, uh, big cost things. Of course, you can just get it from Blood Wells. Dugout taking map control, retaking his third base. Santa slightly ahead economically, didn't get the, the, the upgrade here. It costs a lot of, of, of alloy. He needs as much alloy as he can right now to survive. Dugout is still pushing strong. Santa doing his best, a lot of visible. Red Harvest comes down. Here we come, the pyre, the pyre we got from the Ancient nourishes this Red Harvest. Santa trying to move forward. Keto coming out for every unit that dies. As it, but with the God Phage at the back, it's very hard to push forward. He, you want to be able to surround these God Phage if you want to really take him out. Yeah, the strong God Phage play from Santa might just be enough here. Equal in population just now. The gal. Dugout rethinking his third base, economy has been caught up, but Santa really wants that Aether as he's building those god phase, he's building those expensive Aether units. I say as he just built some white wood reapers, units that, one of the few units in the game that are always invisible, uh, but very low HP, so you don't want them attacking directly into those, into a big army, you want them to go around the sides. Unfortunately, we can't see invisible units as a spectator, so units uh, might be heading to this base right now, we do not know where the white wood reapers will appear next. Was it here? Possibly. Rain of Blood, we know the next push is coming. Blood pours from the sky as he pushes in. Behemoths are going to try and help. Great help from Santa. All his units get faster. Uh, Zol level 5 coming in. Big damage coming in from all sides. Santa's God Fade just getting so much, so much damage. But with Dugal not able to see where his opponent is, he's not ready. Sure, he wants to keep pushing here. And indeed, he is forced to head back, unable to see where his opponent is. Both of them lost all of their pyre. Oh, spent all of their pyre. No pyre left. And uh, where are the Whitewood Reapers, guys? Where are my Whitewood Reapers? Where'd they go? Yeah, pyre again. They both need their pyre right now. Santa wants to get his Zoe. She's only level 5. You, you probably want her a few more levels up. At the, well, Santa would love her to be a few more levels up, but it's not quite easy. You need to spend your pyre to survive. Okay, one of them tried to fly, that makes sense. Okay, Omnivore, Santa's out of position. Uh, this base might very well be forfeit. That's a great from Dugout getting him. Getting on the reinforcement is a good move. And Dugout, Dugout has a great arc right now. The God, the Brood Anchor's at the back and he gets some Cystics. Cystic Crawlers coming into the back units. Santa has to be careful not to go into those. He's at the back. He's and another Zol, but the Zol comes down the right side, a bit too close to the other units, he gets noticed immediately. And the God Fade, you might want to get the Brood Anchors while you still can. Yes. The Gal is forced to step back, loses, loses that army, loses on supply. Scary fight here. Oof, okay, Santa ready to push forward finally. Here's the Whitewood Reapers at the back. They're and they are visible as they were next to the base. They are hidden too, so any unit within two of distance of it can see it. Uh, and Santa just moved back as soon as there were units. He's going to jump back in whenever he can and kill workers again with their high, high damage. What a great game. This has been a great game for this Dugout versus Santa. I'm happy I didn't miss it. On the other side, Dugout is using all his blood to make his units as big as possible. 
uh, the beginning technique uses the blood Sa uh, Mala with all her abilities she uses when she uses Red Harvest and as units die she collects blood and can use this blood to embiggen the units make them big and more powerful more HP don't think they have I don't remember if they had more uh, more attack power as well but they'll be a bit more powerful than Santa's unit Santa finding other positions to recollect right now it's free bases to free bases long distance mining from the Gallus the main base is mined out uh, Santa has not started long distance mining quite yet but yeah, Grape from Nogal is something we don't see quite as often as Immortal. You don't, as uh, the workers auto produce, you often don't think about just, oh, I can long distance mine to get as efficiency from, as I can for my workers. Uh, so yeah, Natural is also going to run out. So this is where it gets dangerous. Santa is going to need another base. going to be only one base mining. The Elder Vault and this base is out is on mining. Yeah, as I said, that Santa starts mining his fourth base. He knows he needs it. Ancient is out. Santa got it first. Got there first. And Dugout tries to come in, but Dugout does not have the army. Santa gets it. 150 power for the second one that comes out. The next Ancient comes out at 20 minutes and will be worth two, uh, 200 power entirely. That's a full ultimate just on your own. Whew. Yeah, the meme build of Santa has been great. I don't really think Santa has been that far behind this whole game. He lost... They both lost their third base a, few, a couple times. Yeah, 160 supply to 107. Plus, it's really the last pyro camp. Diamond event, the difference maker here. This might be what, what gives Santa just enough of a lead that he's able to take it out. Why would Reapers always being very annoying, being invisible? And they're not going to be able to get the base. And Santa's paying attention to something else. Going to lose one of the Whitewood Reapers. The other one is able to just run away somewhere here. Always ready to jump back in, but they are hard to get. Yeah, yesterday at Dugout showed is the Comeback King. Uh, I put the game on YouTube if anyone wants to see it because it's going to disappear from my Twitch in seven days. Dugout is definitely not out of it. I think Santa's slightly in the lead. Well, definitely with 50% more uh, more supply, but it's going to be... Uh, now it's a bit of an economy game, right? Both of them are on, free base, are on their last base mining. Santa finally getting his fourth base. Uh, not mining quite yet. They're actually, they're actually going to be creating uh, workers here, so that's unfortunate. Oh man. Behemoth's coming in. The first one gets sniped immediately. So good play getting all those Wraith Bows in position. But that's so many Behemoths. That was the expensive units you want in these late game fights. Okay, it was Keto to take up all the damage while you're having damage healers at the back. Grove Guardian almost out. Godface is going to be the last shot it, it needs to be taken out. Uh, good point. Oh wow, that's a huge lead on Santa Claus. Thanks for reminding me, Atlander. Plus three, plus two for Santa. Only plus one, plus one for for Dugal. Uh, Dugal not able to take his fourth is really, really hard on him right now. Santa having a big economy lead, even though he's building his own workers here and only has uh, half mining. He still has 3,400 here, and this base has been having trouble with that Whitewood Reaper. Finally taken out. That Whitewood Reaper has been so annoying this whole game. Yeah, at this point, uh, Dugout... <laughs> okay, long distance mining. The long distance mining. There we go. There's more long distance mining can happen here. Santa has so many workers. Uh, just not moving too far. Yeah, Santa... Just sending a small squad here. Only has a call, so his bigger army, where he's putting his forward position, where he can heal up his units and get next stuff up. Of course, he also wants to. Uh, yeah, he re he's really putting a, a, a location. And on this side, he knows Santa knows that nothing's being taken here. Uh, Dugout's coming in. He's gonna try and get a, a good fight in. Great hunt comes in for the Santa Claus. Gonna make it so much harder for Dugout to come in and try and take this fight. Not many units. 23 supply left. I think this might be it for Dugout. He's not gonna abandon so easily. But Santa seems to have done it. Broken down Dugout by with his forward position. And Dugout's gonna have to call it. It's gonna be GG. And Santa takes the second winner's match. And uh, gonna keep moving out the brackets. Ooh, double Zol time. Zol versus Zol. Let's see how this shapes up. It's going to be pretty interesting. We're going to have a lot of invisible units all over the place, and now I'll have to try and figure out where they're headed. So I expect it doesn't let to... Uh... Yeah. Thanks for watching, Atlander. Nice to have you. It's going to be interesting to see how how they'll, they'll face each other with the invisible units that we won't, we won't be able to see. 
Neither will they. So they'll just have to appear. We're going to see some White Wood Reapers appear here and destroy stuff and no one noticing. Of course, we're just going to start with the normal scouts. Uh, going through center. I'm always curious about the, the path they choose. Like if you go here, yeah, okay, they're both going for the fastest route. Which I assume is the fastest route, but without getting any units dead. Yeah, exactly. So you don't get shot at, you go by the north. The other solution is just go here and to zip by the top. Early base, early base, both of them starting not too cheeky. I'm saying part of the reason is just this is a best of one, so you don't want to go all in in the best of one either. If it wasn't, I'm sure Santa could take some extra risks. But so far, very standard play. Um, the first thing we want to check is if there's going to be an Ether Surge on either. Well, Ether Surge is not going to come before the first building, so there's the Ether Surge from Santa's side. Ether Surge not coming from Fireser yet. No, okay, double. Double Altar. Second Altar should come in from Santa just a bit later. There you go. Small differences in build order. And yeah, exactly. Here comes the Ether Surge after. So. He's going to have the units a bit faster. Santa's going to have the powerful invisibility a few seconds faster as well, so it shouldn't matter too much at the end of the day. And if at all, it won't uh, make a big difference. Here comes the units. Just getting ready to mine. It's one of the optimizations you can do. Okay, Neuroside coming in. Oh! Okay, so uh, Chris going for Icors instead. Santa is going to head for the more traditional. Some Bone Stalkers here. He's not going for the tower like last game. Last game, Santa went for this tower. This time, I kind of expect Santa to try and get power as fast as possible and get his Zoe and hunting grounds here. So Santa can get his hunting ground here, set it up. He's going to get Zoe levels pretty quickly. Uh, and then, of course, the question is will Fires really let him do that? Yeah, I see. Hunting ground. Get Zo level up to level 2 almost immediately. Don't lose any unit, that's important. Yeah, Santa gets level 2 for only a bit of pyre. Uh, gains it right back by killing the camp. Yeah, agreed it, Lander. It's always interesting if it's Icor versus uh, versus just normal Bone Stalkers. Of course, you want the first pyre camp anyways. The first 5 Bone Stalkers are going to be used for the camp. And then Santa is going to head out for the next camp, most possibly yeah, the one here. Okay, sets up immediately on the hunting grounds. Gonna try and get Zo leveled up as fast as possible. I really like this play with Zo, honestly. Getting the hunting grounds near the pirate camps, good way to get your levels up. And Icor is ready to go round and round. Just getting the pirate camps. Yeah. Pirate camp time. Okay, it's a cow. So Santa. Figure out his opponent is going for Icor, so got his Akals out as fast as possible. Fires are going for very, very early expansion. Pretty greedy. Uh, Santa might be able to punish it, especially since he went for more damaging units. Icors, Icors are great, but as soon as he has his Akals out, uh, the Bone Stalkers can pretty well deal with them. It's going to depend on the amount of units he can make. Still only on... Okay, there's the third production structure. I was wondering about that. And Santa... Oh, okay. There's a third coming down for... So yeah, Santa playing a bit faster on the tech here. It's going a bit faster on the tech. Yeah, we see a lot of Ether Surges being used already. There is only one Ether Extractor. No Ether Extractor here on Fire Zerg's place yet. Just Surges. Santa coming in here. Yeah, okay. Okay, I like this. This is a great tower to take. Always always great, especially when you want to take this turn. You want to know where your opponent is. And between that and the vent, you have like a full line of sight here. Uh, enemy can go around here, but generally they won't. And if they do, they'll have to come up the hill here, so you'll be able to see them. So I like taking this tower absolutely, as, uh, especially with that third. Santa coming in just gets a shot off. Uh, doesn't want to stick around. He knows he can't kill it. And Fire immediately responds. Tries to send some cheek units on the side. Santa is ready. Uh, is he ready? Yeah, okay, he is ready. Micro should be able to get a few kills, though. Santa trying to go for this round immediately. 
Oh, so close. No kills on the on the workers yet. But one Ikor goes down. Second Ikor trying to go on the other side. Santa just fights back. Doesn't lose a single worker. Great play from Santa. On the other side, he is going to use a few of the Bone Stalkers as the Ikors jump on top of them. Santa does not get this tower core. Doesn't like it as much as the one up top. Trying to save his pyro. He wants to summon some Zoles as fast as possible. Love getting the pyro vent, the, the pyro vent at the bottom left. These are useful and like you don't want to send units out there that often. They're they're out of the way, and you need your units in the fight to, f to kill your opponent. Icor, Icor. So it's really Icor Bone Stalker so far, and yeah, really committing to it. Five, five altars of the Worthy. Santa on his side. Okay, still mostly yeah, uh, mo mostly altars as well. Neither of them are ready to go the next time. Oh, Santa gets rounded here. A Zoe comes out on. It's a weak Zoe though, so it's not as powerful as uh, Santa's would be. And he gets a full surround. Santa gets back to his uh, to his protection. Lose the pirate camp, so that's not <laughs> that's not advantageous. And Santa ready to jump in somewhere, trying to get some damage. More and more Icors being produced by Firezerg. Firezerg really getting his Icor production up. Yeah, here comes. Just scouts. Santa still doesn't have his third base, so at this point, Firezerg's third is completely mining, has eight workers on it on top of it. Santa is going to be a pretty far behind, is going to get further and further behind as long as he didn't take this expansion. He finally takes it, but it's so late compared to the opponent. He's going to have about two minutes of lost income from his opponent. Santa needs to win some of the next fights to, to if he wants to be any type of lead. He has so far the mortal lead with four level four on Zo is a big advantage. And Santa just. Okay, builds another tower. He wants vision here. Yeah, cancels it. This is, uh, he sees the damage coming up. Oh, Farzer realized, hey, Santa's taking it. Maybe that's a good idea. He's going to take it himself. It's a great forward position to attack your opponent. And with this, Santa might decide if he wanted to get that tower cord to help defend this. Zo comes out. And with Zo coming out, you gotta be really careful of the next attacks. The Empowered Strike, aiming the, the Power Core, but Zo is uh, is done for the moment. Icor is coming in from the from the side. Santa has his defensive up and running. Omnivores ready to stop them. Was okay. There was a hunting round there. That's why. <laughs> I was wondering why the they got they got tagged, but it was a hunting round. Right. Uh, the quick attack upgrade is going to give Santa a decent lead. He's behind the Cononcle. He's ahead on the on the Zol attack. Yeah. I mean, he's ahead, but he's still 40 supply behind. That's a, a pretty big difference. I do like this call composition quite a bit. Icors won't do as much against them. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, I was talking about Zakals, and here comes Zakals from uh, Firezerg. Come around to position. Like... I still think Firezerg is slightly ahead, but it's not a commanding lead in any way. Santa has the tech advantage, has the upgrade advantage, only plus one attack. Yeah, Firezerg can take out the power core. It's away. Here comes a Zoe. Zoe gets eliminated immediately, and Santa gets Zoe of his own. Level 5 Zoe does immense amount of damage. Firezerg has no choice but to retreat, but he does get the power... the... the... Uh, the tower core. He's gonna keep moving in. Not sure about that. He's gonna get surrounded. Trying to split Santa's attention in two places at once. Santa sends a bit of units, but sends more of his units to try and defend as he takes a fourth base in a northern position. These units are gonna be forfeit from Fire Zurich. Santa pulls a few workers to help out. Uh, workers aren't too expensive. Takes a lot of shots. It's gonna help destroy those Icors. Fight's still happening at the fourth base. Fourth base is gonna go down, but at what cost? Fire Zurich loses most of his units, and Santa catches up in the supply value. He loses the fourth base. Probably can, most likely cancels it. Gets a tower here to help reinforce. Santa, I'm kind of surprised Santa doesn't have more at the back to help defend. I'm assuming he doesn't think it necessary at this point to uh, to have full control here. Tower here is very nice for Grizzly for he has full control. Santa getting ready for a small counter attack. Even killing this altar, it's it's a pretty good kill honestly. It could be worth it. Scouts, well, free power each. Not not worth it. Here comes the units coming in. Santa has some Whitewood Reapers. They're invisible, but as soon as they get detected, they're going to be pretty useless. Santa coming in from the back. And the Pyrocamp is going to go to Grizzrift, uh, to Firezerg. 
as he keeps going around. This is a really big army. He's putting his army together. Santa's army. Santa Claus is great hunt. Gets a Zoe in. Zoe is level 5, but she's in the wrong position. But she's fast enough and she can just rally back. Santa going for a pincer movement, going all around. Zoe comes in for fire, so gets eliminated immediately as units come in. Lots of level up coming in for Santa Claus on this side. Level 6 of Zoe. He got the full surround. The great hunt so powerful. Even with a smaller, what seemed like a smaller army, Santa's getting the lead with his pincer attack. Gets a lot of more units. Level 7 Zoe! And the final moves comes in. Santa uses Great Hunter, great efficiency. Santa takes a com I was gonna say commandingly in this game, but we're gonna have to see what the next move. The fourth base comes in, and Firezerg's at attack has been completely forwarded. Coming with more units from the back. Santa's waiting for his next units to pop. They're gonna be very useful. Taking up, getting the Red Sears. Yeah, yeah. Santa's been really good at using Zol in these fights. Really using her, her fully efficiently. And yeah, he wants this pirate camp back. Doesn't want his red seer to be taken out by it. Notice the attack melee. I love this tower from Fire Drug though. Getting getting both of them is more powerful, but getting one of them. Oh god, is, is he gonna get the fire? He might be able to snipe some units. No, he's just jumping in. Santa's out of position. He needs to keep his units though here. He needs to defend that part. And Firezerg's going to post Santa Cloud. Going for the base immediately. Firezerg attacking it. There's nothing left to defend it. On the other side, Santa wants needs to win this fight. But he doesn't really need to. Gets a Godfage. Godfage... He's, the Godfage is alone. Santa's moving back to his natural defendant. Godfage gets taken out, and Santa's in an immense amount of trouble as he's going to summon Zoe to help defend this push. Level 7 Zoe might just be able to defend this almost on her own, but not quite. Santa moving in, but the multitasking of fires are proving to overcome a bit of Santa's forces. Takes it for base, so Santa has been stuck in his own sight for about two minutes now. Is, is the main also going to be sniped? Santa might just have enough to take it out before it can happen. A lot of units. It's going to be close, but Fire Santa seems to have enough to defend this. The base will not go down. On the other side of the map, Santa lost his growth guard in the top. So Firezerg gets more and more control of the map and has 200 power. Command leave on Firezerg. He might be able to take out Santa's fourth as his natural has already been sniped. Santa's going to try and cover a pincer attack. Zoe comes out from, from Firezerg. She's pretty weak though, not going to do too much damage. And Santa coming in from the back. Is it going to be enough? Yeah, his whole gets sniped again. Does not get to level up too much on Fire Drug's side. Pretty much the only advantage Santa seems to have so far. Empowered attacks. Gonna kill those Zakals so fast. On the other side, Fire Drug does not care. He just wants to head back into Santa's main base. And Santa has been stuck on his own side. Not able to counterattack and do any damage to his opponent's economy. Or bases. Fire Drug coming in for an attack. The Icro comes in just as the base is about to be placed on Santa. Santa is not gonna be happy with this. Santa might just try to go for the big base rate move at this point. He's in the opponent's base, but his opponent has more bases, is better equipped for it. Santa has a bit more tech with his red seers, can do a lot of damage to these units. They don't have quite enough mana though to pull off their spells. And yeah, we're going for a full base rate at this point. Santa feels this is his only solution. First, is trying to get his units together. He's still producing units at the back. So if he gets his full units, he might be able to get a full surround. He uh, doesn't have enough mana on these red seers, but they can use their blood to cast some spells on his opponents. Don't know if he has, has a blood plague yet. It could be really useful for these attacks. Santa is not mining anywhere at all. The two Iker is going to take out all the units. Santa still had on upgrades. That is his one saving grace. But unit-wise, he's heading back home. He doesn't think he has enough to defend this. Uh, his main base has been decimated, losing most of the production structures. Those are expensive, expensive structures. Each of them, oh man, Santa losing the main on top of it, losing the main and the natural. Firezerg, Santa needs to win a commanding fight right now. He needs to win a big fight. His Zoe is level 8, level 3 Zoe is not going to be able to do much on Firezerg. We're excited to get another level 3, that might be enough. But at this point, he's attacking on all sides. Santa has nothing left. He has a bigger army. We've seen yesterday with Doug Al. Seen yesterday with Doug Al how you can win with just a strong counter attack. But Santa does not have a strong army. And yeah, Doug Al taking, taking a position of his opponent's base. Tries to take this base. See Santa's building there. Um, at this point, Fire Strike might just win by elimination. If he kills both Santa's bases, Santa's will have nothing left. He doesn't have enough alloy to even build another base again. So Santa's in deep trouble. As soon as these two bases fall, Santa's going to be eliminated from the game. And yeah, that, might all be, that might be all she wrote. Santa winning a final fight here. 
And he's gonna have to take everything he has to defend this base, guys. This is the final base. Fires are going for it, going for the kill. Santa comes in from the back, but is it too soon? And Santa is gonna have to GG out from the Lit Nation. Fires are the great multitasking, takes game, takes the game, and is first on the bracket. Let's get into it. Quantity has a quality all its own. Definitely agree with that. It's often quality over quantity, but uh, the last game, even though Santa had better quality of Zol, uh, the quantity of uh, the cows went to uh, went to Fires Rogue's uh, camp. So looking at the last game, something that that Santa did very well was getting his Zol up up levels very quickly, and we'll see if Flicky's able to do that as well. Uh, Farzog went for an early third base. We'll see Flicky in general plays pretty aggressively in his expansion timing as well. So it might be two very fast free bases on both players' side. I'm just expecting that from Farzog from the last game. And yeah, from what I know from, uh, from Farzog, macro player to the core. Virginia, it's okay. First units coming out. Okay, both sides. Man, I'm talking in chat about who... If people go for more for Aru or Crop. So far this tournament we've had a lot of Aru players. I don't think that's a really a state of the balance. A lot of players do like Croft a lot. We're missing some of our better players like Itlander in chat. He would play Croft and would be in the upper players as well. He he's definitely at the same level of Flicky. who is still undefeated in this tournament. And Santa as well. He can he can definitely beat Santa. So yeah, Itlander would have would have brought some Croft for us. So is the power of Ajari. So far, double. And okay, same, same build as last time, going for early bone early bone stalkers, and on the opponent's side, okay, full bone stalkers for Flicky. Going for the early camps, going for the early camps instead of uh, uh, the Elder Stones, I forgot exactly how they're called. And Flicky actually going for a very fast tower here, he wants to have his healing spot as fast as possible. It's different to playstyle. I don't like this. You just get there, you can heal up, you can do those units to get killed by the tower as well. Yeah. This one is just jumping on top of it. Ooh, flicky, be careful. Flicky, be careful. No! Flicky, no! Lost one of the Bone Stalkers. Not game ending, but not great. Not a great start against uh, losing one of your units early. It's not game breaking, luckily. He's gonna be able to uh, get back to it. Now there's uh, six Icors on the way from his opponent, and Flicky going for the Underspines instead. Oh yeah, I missed the Rose side at the back. So heading for the. Yeah, you said Flicky prefers Icor, but no Icors here so far. Just the Underspines. <laughs> I do like the Underspine choice, honestly. If he, if he can just get the slow on them, he's gonna be able to. You need to get the right surround on the on the Icors, but this is a good mix. I think it's one fire event. There's a lot more power going on for Fire Flicky might want to go for this power camp. He doesn't want to be too far behind his uh, in his camps already. Wow, okay. So I was talking about Flicky being greed in the expansions, but that's nothing compared to Fire Zerg. Flicky might want to get a scout in if he can. He's trying to see as much as he can. There's no... Yeah, that explains why Fire Zerg goes slow, slowly on them. I kind of like it on his part. By going, by going so slowly on the... Uh, on the ether, he's able to get his third base super fast. Uh, Flicky wants to see it. He's going to be able to see it. Yeah, okay. His scout sees it. That's very good for Flicky. He knows that if he does a quick push, he won't. He's going to take his base. He's going to accept the loss about, you know, 30 seconds or so slower economy. But it's not as bad as Santa last game. We had about two minutes late of the economy. Yeah, Icar front would be a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, okay. Flicky going for Zol here. If he's able to get the base, it would be pretty good, but... All he's getting here is a few shots on the, on that. It's not uh, Your confidence is amusing. I will save you for last. Not quite enough. 
not quite enough to force his opponent to stay and defend the base. If, so that probably could have worked if Flicky had about, you know, like an extra production supply worth of units. Then Farzak would have wanted to defend his base and then he wouldn't have had a choice to engage. And that Flicky didn't have really enough units to really force the engagement from his opponent. And when you force the engagement, that's when Zol was going to be uh, is going to be useful because well, Firedrug doesn't have a choice to engage. Firedrug in that engagement was allowed to just retreat and go out of this, go out of it. Okay, here comes the units. Icor coming in. There's the end of the game. One Bone Stalker. Throwing his toothpicks away at a house and hoping the toothpicks gonna bring down the gra the the whole ceiling, but nothing collapses. Ooh, getting the underspine. Okay, good for Flicky. He's able to get back to his Grove Garden. He's gonna heal up. He's gonna heal up as much as he can. Just had fires are getting ready to Yeah, with the third base already established for Flicky. He might want to start getting some a bit more static D. He's already won some an omnivore here. It's gonna be very helpful for the defense. Getting on top of it. Gets a few kills. Okay, here comes the Zol at the back of the army. But Zol level 1 does not have enough HP. Gets sniped immediately. Doesn't get a level 1. Zol's going to be slower to produce for the next time as well. Not Things aren't going exactly Flicky's way, but it's okay. He's going to be able to get the Grove Guardian. There's not too much deficit on either way as Flicky went for a pretty good economy. Uh, the fight is coming towards him. The I cores are faster. Not fast enough to get on top of the units. Yeah, Tears Day for Tractors finally coming in. Flick has had a pretty big advantage on the tech here, if he was so wanted. So he's able to he's able to get a few structures in. Yeah, still mostly bone stalkers. All his scouts are dead. Fight coming in here. Coming in with the underspines. Underspines able to get the units pretty weak and he's gonna be able to go jump on top of them. That's perfect. Jumping on top of the units. Use a few underspine, but that's fine. Losing those underspines to get those I cores. I think he got a better engagement as his opponent for sure as the supply shows up. I uh, didn't even have to use Zolt there. And here comes the first counter attack of the game. Icor is coming in. I think he's going to have to re react quickly. Omnivore is at the back. Yeah, I just need to move a bit closer to Omnivore. Bone Stalkers come in. A few more units. There's nothing. Oh, yeah, there's Omnivore at the back as well on this side. So Flicky just has to move his units fast enough. At the same time, Flicky is attacking his opponents directly in the face. The tower is here to protect. Flicky is going to try and establish a forward momentum. And yeah, here goes the I-Cores. They all end up fine, but get a few kills. There's only five left, so we got, got at least three kills on the workers here. Yeah, the camp is... That'll be worth... Underspine's coming in from Firestrike. He didn't build them at all last game against Santa. But I guess he sees how effective they've been against him, really getting those kills in. I forget what type of armor uh, Underspines are, but they're probably not light, so they don't take extra damage from them. Yeah, Santa, yeah, Flicky wants to take out this Grove Guardian, finally has the time, and there's nothing really defending, Firestruck isn't fast enough to get by, uh, Tower went to Flicky for a second, got a bit of power from it, Flicky has a good amount of power, could, can't create Hunt because it doesn't have at all enough Zol levels. And here comes the Zol from Flicky, and here comes the Zol from uh, Fire Strike. Both of them going for a Zol. Both of them getting Focus Fire down. Are they going to be able to get level 2 this time around? Level 2 for Flicky. He runs back, not quite fast enough. He just don't go, go for it. But Flicky also put a Hunting Ground. The Hunting Ground is really powerful. Able to get a few more levels on Zol. Level 3 Zol. Whitewood Reapers come in from the back for Flicky. No one saw that coming. Kill a few of them. Don't get killed themselves. Uh, but now the Whitewood Reapers have to be careful. That was un unexpected Whitewood Reapers. <laughs> And where is going to send them off next? That's the next big question. Where are the White Reapers? Is it, does he want another back from the back? Oh, there they come. Great Hunt comes in. White Reapers get super fast. Oh, he just get a boost of speed. Jumping in. Zola's is level 5. Ready to level up to level 6 or 7 on top of it. Uh, White Reapers at the back. Going to be sniped. Expensive units to get sniped there. And does Slicky have enough? He's being surrounded a bit. But he has a lot of units. He can afford to... Uh, he pinched a bit, but not too much with the Great Hunt. He got his Zol to level 6, though. That, just for getting Zol to level 6, might have been worth it. He's out of power, but he's able to get more power soon. Frums on the map. Yeah, needs to send those Frums uh, to his opponent's main. There's not anything defending it, so he's, he's going to be able to get a few kills at the very least. 
Especially with, yeah, there's there's no anti-air at all here. Firework has zero anti-air at all. Level six all versus level one is all that heavily advantages Slicky. Like for all pirate abilities, though, is all about those levels. Oh, Whiteboard Reaper gets sniped immediately. Jumps in, gets sniped. Slicky has to be careful. Frums uh, being killed by the tower because there's still no end here in that army. Okay, I like this fifth base from Flicky. So four bases. So the thing is with this fifth base, it's gonna make a fire strike thing. Okay, this is where Flicky's at. This is where his fourth base is at. Uh, you're gonna be, they're pretty much on equal footing, especially if Firezerg sees it. But given that, Flicky having the base at the top that hasn't been scouted, I'm assuming it hasn't been scouted. Okay, it doesn't really tell. Um, assuming that base hasn't been scouted, it's pretty good for Firezerg. Uh, for Flicky, having that extra base in his opponent, his economy is gonna explode a bit faster. Ah, uh, yeah. On the retreat, getting... It's always nice getting a lot of units to retreat, especially expensive units like the Underspines here. Able to heal up, get the last few Icors, and Frums are doing the damage at the top. <laughs> Flicky wants nothing to do, he wants no more, he wants no more Icors. Uh, with the Grove Guardian here is going to be hard, but Flicky launches a, launches a Zol from the back, gets a huge line attack. A lot of units are, are marked for life, and sent... And yeah, Zoe might be able to level up again. A great fight for Flicky. As his Frums do the damage on the other side, this is such a great engagement from Flicky. Flicky showing his mastery of multitasking as well. Getting an extra base on Fire Zerg might be the big deal breaker here. Only a few Frums, as most of the Frums are up top. No more Ikers possible for, uh, for Fire Zerg. Don't know if you want to build anymore, but you definitely won't be able to at this point. Upgrade wise, 1 0 and plus 1 armor for Flicky. Flicky preferring the armor. Probably, yeah, okay, he has two of them. He's, he's gonna double upgrade eventually. Sneaky Flicky. Yeah, Flicky, uh, I like Flicky's position a lot right now. He has more economy, he has more levels of Zol, so his immortal is more powerful. Uh, army wise, okay, Underspines are gonna be attacked. Yeah, Underspines can attack here. Flicky's gonna look for a next target. He can get some damage in. Omnivores are being set up every base. That's some good uh, forced. Yeah. Forces his opponent to build omnivores he didn't necessarily want. Uh, yeah. Here come the units from the back. And Flicky's gonna decide to go. F is he going for the ancient? Uh, Firezer is completely out of position, so he should be able to get it if he decides to go for it. Said Flicky's going for. Come on, Flicky, get the ancient. Get me the ancient. Yes, there we go. Alright, careful not to stay too long in that circle of death. But yeah, Fires are, oh, he hears that the Ancient is being attacked, but he also being attacked by Frum. So Frum getting great distraction, giving Flicky just enough time to attack the Ancient before anything too dangerous happens. And yeah, Ancient is killed. Uh, Flicky at plus two armor. Still no attack upgrades. So yeah, Flicky on the upgrade lead as well. So Flicky definitely has a lead. I'm not sure how much of a commanding lead is. The extra base, at this point in the game, every base is still mining, so it's only, what, a fifth extra income? So 20% income is measurable, but won't notice that much. But if he gets this base on top of it, not too sure he will be able to, as there is up the hill. Flicky has to be careful. His expensive units are right here. Right for taking. I like that he controls them back, sends them a bit further back. And, okay, here comes the Blood Plagues coming in. And at the same time, yeah, okay, there's a counter to the other side, so if they can both get a base of their opponent, it's going to be worth it for Flicky. He's going to be one base ahead. Oh, wow, that's a lot, that's a lot of red seers, that, but they don't do as much damage. That's not much units. Flicky going for the Great Hunt. He wants to jump on top of all the expensive units. Oh, man, level 2 Zol finally coming in on uh, on Fire Zerg's side, but that's too little too late as Flicky jumps on top of all the expensive units, gets the base on top of it. Fire Zerg needs to get that base. He's going to keep counterattacking on the other side, but Flicky... Pushing forward to Zol level 7, might get her to level 8 with all of these units about to get sniped. Uh, Firezerg really going for a bit of a base counter, a base trade, but Flicky has just more bases. It's not going to be worth it, there's going to be two omnivores defending, more units are going to spawn and help defend this next push. And yeah, commanding attack from Flicky, might not want to push forward, might be time to head back and defend the next that base. Flicky just making sure all his units come together before he defends. Omnivores go down, that's about all that's able to go down. Grove Garden is taken out. And Draining Embrace is going to stick the unit there. Would steal its blood, it's not that much blood to steal. 
Again, not too much anti here. Here is the Frums come in. Uh, yeah, trying to hunting around, but there's just not that much uh, units left to hunt. And yeah, at this point, Grizzly finally sees this base, but it's too little too late. It's been in mind for a long time. Flicky like expands behind, re expands this base, and Firezerk is only on free bases to Flicky's six? Yeah, Flicky's trying to go to six bases. Uh, Grizzly's stuck on free, not going for his fourth quite yet. The six base of Flicky might be sniped, but it doesn't matter because he has a secret base here that Firezerk does not have time to check out for. Yeah, cancels it. Pretty sure I wasn't canceled. Uh, the spells aren't able to hit. White Reaper's coming from the back. Flicky showing his metal here, showing the power of his Zol. Level 8 Zol, ready to rumble and jump in at every opportunity. He doesn't have enough power left, so Flicky might need to uh, hit it get, get a few more power. I like the position of how much Firezerg is trying to choke out his opponent, right? Getting the towers everywhere, getting vision, and make sure his opponent won't be able to just jump him at any opportunity. However, Flicky has been having trouble getting as much power as he'd like. He needs to get that power in. Yeah, Whitewood Reapers. There we go. Now he can summon a Zol if he wants. There we go. Summons a Zol. Not sure how much he's able to chase on his opponent at this point, but Zol is so fast on her own at level 8, she can just jump on top of the units and just force them to fight her. White Reapers jumping on top. Those, those sneaky guys getting some kills, getting Zol more XP to get ready to get to level 8. And Firezerg has to come back with his army. He needs to defend this push. And there's just not that much he's coming. He's gonna get a pincer though. It's not much here. Level 2 Zo, she might just be able to get level 3 finally. Level 3 Zo for Firezerg. Getting eliminated, which means her next appearance for Firezerg is gonna be that much later. Is the cow coming in from the back? Here we go. Um. And Firezerg. Sees how many bases his opponent has. Gonna GG out. It's a best of three. He knows he can go to the next game and come back from this. Flicky takes game one off Farzer. Flicky is the only undefeated player in this tournament so far. Let's get ready to rumble. Game two of this best of three between the two undefeated players. Farzer just lost his very first game here. Uh, while Flicky keeping his undefeated strike going longer. Okay, it seems like they're still mining. Yeah, okay, it's just a visual bug. Yeah, okay, just a visual bug. I was worried. Yeah, perfect. Um, yeah. Here goes the, the god heart here. He's starting to... For both of them going for an early expand. They were... They're both macro players that are used to macro playing, right? Flicky uh, did a first good game, and Fires are just... Firezerg plays macro game. Flicky was able to get more Zo level ups, which I think was one of the biggest determining factors in the last game. So if Firezerg is able to get his Zo just as strong as Flicky, I think it uh, could be pretty fun. Oh, okay, yeah. Getting ready for his second structure. There we go, two production values. They're pretty expensive, right? 300 alloy, it's only as much expensive. It's a big part of the game, a big part of the game design here is that since these production buildings are so expensive, it costs less to remake your army, uh, comparatively. So 300 supply here, but it's only 400 to, to get your bone stalker full to the supply of the building. It's a, it's, it's a pretty cool balancing lever of production building cost versus opportunity. All about cost opportunity in, in these RTSs. I course again on this side and yeah okay no seems like Flicky's been really liking his underspine so I wouldn't be surprised to see more underspine play on this side. Underspine do probably require to get the the extractor as fast as possible. Yeah on this side only one of them taken. Yeah that's what I'm saying. So yeah to go to underspine so for Flicky's build here he gets the neural site with the ether Ether search to get the 100 Ether as fast as possible. Then to be able to play, get some underspines as quickly, more quickly, he needs the Ether Extractor. So it's really going to be a few units here, and then go for the Ether Extractor to get, play this underspine style. Underspine really good because you slow down your opponent and able to get extra kills that way. And it, I think it's a better start than last time. I don't think he lost any Bone Stalkers this time around. 
Okay, nice. So Fleeky staying his scout here so he knows where his opponent is at. And from last game, he might just deduct. Okay, he likes his Icors to open up with. So Flicky has time to go to the top. Icors come a bit later than just pure Bone Stalker, so he won't get stuck in this tunnel. This can be an issue if you go in there and your opponent just jumps on you and has more units. You're not getting out, especially as you spent a lot of resources killing this camp first. Uh, you can just get stuck and lose your first initial units, and that, that, that's almost game and ending sometimes. So Flicky, making sure his opponent doesn't come to him, has scouts in the right position. So he knows where his opponent's at. Sees the I-Cores, knows exactly what's up, has the two Pyre Miners. Flicky has a great start to the game so far. He could go and try and contest this one, uh, but not until his underspines are ready. He's going Bone Stalker Underspine for, to begin the game. Underspines having a little slow attack. And on Fire Surge, going for i -Core, Bone Stalker with a very fast, faster base. Yeah, Flicky's gonna see this immediately. Gonna get a faster base of his own. Sees their Bone Stalker here, so his symbiote is in danger. <laughs> yeah, poor symbiote. Getting chased down. Oh, is he gonna lose the symbiote? No, okay, he's gonna send it to the Grokar and smart move. Gets healed immediately because it wasn't attacking anything. And Bone Stalker dies. But honestly, great play from Fire Surge, delaying his opponents. I had grown bored of easy kills. Just slowing it down, just slowing down your opponent's expansion by like 20 30 seconds gives a really strong lead. You look at this base, it's more than half done. Flicky just started it. Great start. Also, not just started, I think the bases start with like 20% HP just to make sure they can't get sniped as soon as they build. It happened before, it was a feels bad moment for a lot of folks. <laughs> the devs, uh, make sure. Godheart is built. No Godheart yet on this side, still on the Grove Heart. Yeah, upgrade's gonna start going up for Flicky. So I want, you do want your upgrades as fast as possible. And, okay, a lot of Alters. Five Alters, a lot of units coming out. Smart choice, honestly. Going for the base, that means you need a lot of units to defend it. You're not gonna attack too much. That's why he still hasn't built any type of Aether. On Flicky's side, he's going full Aether. He's gonna be attacking up. His army's gonna be more complex than his opponent, but in lesser numbers for, for a sm small amount of time. But, yeah, this complexity is right here, right? The underspines are here, they're more complex units. They don't get extra damage dealt from the I-Cores, but it can be chased down, so you gotta be really careful about that. Bone Stalker is being really annoying. As all the Aether comes out, and only four production structures so far for Flicky. More are gonna be coming up, uh, as he needs to catch up to his opponent on the free bases. That's gonna be about those, those engagements, right? Being really annoying here. Ah oh, yeah, Icor's going to the back. There's only an Omnivore, but might be uh, not strong enough as, yeah. Some of the symbiotes are going to be taken out, unless he decides not to. Oh, I love, love them being stuck here. Zo coming out, level 2. Able to get a level 2 on Zo or so early is really good. Uh, but getting those early kills on the workers, excellent play from, uh, from Fire Zerg. So Groveheart. He might actually be going for uh, some Icor speed or something, going for, for the fast uh, Godheart and collecting that much Aether from Surges. Yeah, 500 Aether from Surges. Gotta wonder at what point it's worth to get the Extractor, but I think that's the same price as one Extractor without having to pay it immediately. Slightly faster too. Here comes Icor, move the Bone Stalkers back, the smart move. Here comes the first Zoe summon, and she's gonna get a kill. That's exactly what she wanted. Zoe level 2 for both players. It's gonna make it a bit easier. Hunting Ground coming down. For, uh... Oh, I'm not sure this is the fight Flicky wanted. Flicky's in trouble. That was such a great fight. Oh, Zoe coming out. Zoe coming out from his side as well, but might just be too little too late. As almost all of his units has died. These expensive underspines. What a great fight from Firezerg. Complete surround. All of the units from Flicky are dead. These expensive underspines. Oh, that's so painful to watch. Poor Flicky. That uh, Zoe came at just the right moment. And the other issue is that with, with the Icor having their speed upgrade at this point, it's going to be hard for Flicky to really retreat from any fight. And Firezerg proving his worth as he jumps in there. Here come the units. Yeah, he can just jump on top of units. The fast Icors can jump on top of all the units. They jump on the Zakaos. Flicky trying to jump back to his uh, defensive. Thrums are the right move here. With Thrums, he's able to to not be attacked back, but at this point, there's just so many units on his opponent's side. It's 90 to 27 supply, that big fight might have just been it. And behind this, Firezer can do whatever he wants. He can expand, he can he can build more units, he can keep attacking. He's getting his extractors just to keep pushing, but all he wants to do now is deny his opponent's economy as much as possible. 
Icor's not great at, at killing units, but they're great at denying economy as he did here, killing almost all the symbiotes. Symbiotes are all being moved to natural, so nothing left here. He's one of your expensive Aether Extractors as well. Get some heals. He wants more kills with those Icors. He wants to get to the natural orders. Like, what, 20 workers building up? And say, no, it doesn't say on when you're a worker. And yeah, still moving in. Uh, Flicky has a work cut out for him. So going for the Icors was a fun move. But first, you might have not have been enough at this point. Level 4 Zul is, is fun, is decent. Might not be able to defend his third base, though, as his opponent goes for the fourth base. Flicky's in a lot of trouble. More Icors coming in. He can afford to just send Icors around. Even going through the Grove Guardian doesn't matter. Probably doesn't want to attack the Grove Guardian itself, though. Ah, okay, he, he didn't send it all the way. Uh, Flicky wants to take back his third base, but probably didn't have the economy for it. He needs to make units to survive. Especially as Bone Stalkers will start coming out from his opponent. And here comes some units. Good fight from Flicky there. That was a pretty decent fight. The yeah, he's getting more kills than his opponent, which is what you really want. As uh, the Akros are jumping on top, they're going to be a, they're going to be revealed as jump on top. But this was just a counter push. Fire Zerg is coming for the other attack from the other side. Wants to kill the Grove Guardian from there. It's going to be able to have free access to the natural. And Flicky can't keep following the Icors. Has to go back to his base and defend those positions. Underspine's coming out for his opponent. Fire Zerg finally got all of his Aether extractors. Is able to get his uh, his economy up and running, getting those expensive E4 units. It is still 1-0 for Flicky, uh, but Flicky is still in dire straits. Two bases to four. Bigger army for his opponent. The only saving grace might be... Yeah, he has plus one armor upgrades. It's pretty decent to keep his units alive as long as possible, especially against something like uh, the Icors that don't do that, that much damage. And having an army of... A Frums against an opponent that really doesn't have that much anti-air besides summoning Zol and Oh no, he has underspines now. One zero Flicky. Yeah. Flicky's gonna try and best and come back from this. Yeah. D -d -d yeah, this is a murder of Frums, right? A murder of Frums ravaging across his opponent's army. He's gonna need, he's gonna need his murder of Frums to murder the opponent if he wants to survive. Static defense is powerful, might be enough of all the, all the units. There's not too many Icors left, actually, so... The Bone Stalkers are morphing than they used to be. Flicky going for Great Hunt, sending all his workers as well. Sends and has uh, Zol coming in. Zol level 5. Is this gonna be the fight he needs to come back from this? If he kills this whole army, he is definitely back into this. Frums are able to chase down the whole army. Frums are one of the only fast, faster units in all of these, and they are being chased down. The Underspines have nothing left. Flick is still on two bases, though. Killing this army is a great start. He's gonna kill every single thing. Zol level 5, level 6 at this point. Zol really getting up her levels. Uh... Yeah, the only issue now is that he has no more he has no more uh, pyre, and his opponent is on four bases. He might be able to get this base at the very least. Doesn't want to go up, <laughs> using all his workers. This is as close to the end as you can get. He's expanding behind it, so hopefully he can get back into it. But that was such a great friend. It's exactly what he needed, using his workers as li as a fodder. But the Frums are going to completely focus fire down as also well, she can't get to level four. Want to keep that level as low as possible, but there's a false around coming in from uh, uh, from Firezerg this time again, and with a and with a false around, Flick is going to be forced to retreat. And without more power, he can't even get a, can't even get a zone of his own. Whew! Underspines are up and running. Units coming in. Hoo -hoo. Okay, he's coming in for the kill again. Okay, coming in from the north. Ah, uh, yeah, so far as he thinks he has enough to defend his fourth base while well, beyond to attack. Uh, Flick is third, and he might just be right. Flicky has no choice but to retreat. His farms aren't the best at attacking directly, and these all have anti-air, so Flicky doesn't really want to fight this with his farms, but at this point, if he doesn't have a third base, it's going to be dangerous for his opponent going up to five bases. Very dangerous, very dangerous for Flicky, and 
There's so much anti-air here. Frum's being slowed down. Flicky doing his best, but the Grove Guardian here on top of it for his opponent. It's gonna be hard to jump on top of it. And here comes the other counterattack. Flicky's trying to be uh, trying to take the, the other the triangle for location. But Firestrike does not care. He's just going for the juggler, going for the throw, going for the natural as another yeah, Flicky is going to have to GG out of this one. It is now 1-1. This series is going to go to game number 3. So yeah, game 3 of this best of 3. So, both of them won one game. The last game was really decided by one fight, really. Like, I often say that this game is not about fights, but when it's that deciding, it's really hard to come back from it. And, uh, yeah, we saw from last game... Fires are just took that fight and snowballed his way to victory. Sometimes you lose the first fight and it doesn't matter too much, but last time, man, that was a that was a big one. I'm kind of hopeful that that uh, Flicky's going to go for the same composition again. It was pretty fun seeing the Underspines versus the Icors. So I wouldn't be surprised to see more of the same. I think it went pretty well. You just got to be careful because the Icor speed is really what killed uh, Flicky at that point. Because the Icors were able to surround him completely. And from that surround, that's when he really fell apart. I feel like you're trying to find that. Ooh, he gets the first, uh, the first kill. He gets the direct shot, whereas the opponent does not. So Fleeking is still in this teapot battle, but Firezerg wisely decides to move away from that tea, from that scout battle. Not teapot. We can't say teapot. Natural coming up. Natural coming up on both sides. And on the other side. Yeah, bon the initial five bone stalkers are always going to come out, and that's the next part. And okay, Flicky changed it up, goes for Icor of his own. Wow, there's okay, there's the Icor on the other side as well. Flicky was just a bit faster on his E for Surge as he often is, and from the E for Surge and getting Grove Guardian, Flicky. This. Or Flicky's unit is just invisible. That's why I don't see him. Possibly. Or possible as well. Okay, uh, Flicky just decided I'm not building any units at all. I'm just gonna build a full Icor. Um, yeah, so this is a strategy that Flicky's done quite a bit. He is a fan of Icor from. I've seen him do it quite a bit. But now, as we've seen in the last game, with Underspine also able to attack air, Icors might not be enough for Icor, Icor from. I do like Icor from a lot, though. It's it's a fun composition because you force your opponent to build light and then you have to counter the light units. You don't have to. Scout's coming in. Oh, is Flicky coming in to try and steal the kill? That would be so... Oh no, is, is he gonna get it? Oh, what a steal from Flicky. He gets in, steals the final shot, and now he gets one of the pyro events. Can take the other pyro event on the other side. And Firezer will not be happy about that one. Going for his third, getting Icors of his own. But Flicky is still producing Icors. He is uh, full on Icor production now. Mm, gets his Efer Extractor, so from the Efer Extractor is going to be able to get his Godheart and Icor speed if he wants. Or transition into Frums as quickly as possible. Flicky still needs to get the Godheart. Not have the bases, get it yet. Third base going down for both players. This time Flicky is not delayed on his opponent. He's going at the exact the same time. Icor bit a bit different. A bit playing out different. Um, yeah. A lot of these for sure just on on uh, on Fire's side, which will advantage him on this stage of the game, able to get a bit faster bases generally. But Flea has adapted really well, getting as much power as he can. So when he summons Zol for the time, she will be able to Zol all over the place. And here comes... Oh no, Flicky's not looking, he's gonna lose. Only one Icor, it's not too bad. An Icor and a Scout is really not that big of a deal. Just gotta make sure that his Icor stay near each other. The first one to get Icor speed might have a pretty big lead on his opponent though. The prayer speaks with bold words. 
Intrigue. Still no god hearts, kind of surprising to me. Gain the upgrades for Flicky. Wonder if you can go for attack or defense. It seems like when with this type of build, you might want to go more for a defense type of uh, opening. Great surround on fire, getting that early uh, supply lead. Very important in these type of matchups. Still doesn't have as much power, but he was able to collect it from the towers and the camps as well. So fires are doing a really good job so far. Oh, slightly. F I thought they were pretty equal, but I guess it was slightly faster on the fire zerg side. And that's a lot of units coming in for Flicky. Flicky needs to be careful. Oh man, this does not look good for Flicky. Flicky just has less units in the opponent. He's gonna call in Zo. And Zo's gonna help a lot, but Zo can just be focused fire down at this point. As both Zo's get fire, focused fire, gets to level 3 on his Zo at least. Uh, is not able to kill his opponent, so who's gonna stick to level one? That could be considered a win for Flicky if he doesn't die from this hit. Also gonna go for a hunting round. That could be, be a big difference maker. Fire should not be attacking the base. Icors are not good at killing bases. Okay, that's a good fight from Flicky. Flicky gets back into the game with this fight, getting ahead on supply by a big amount, and that's how the game swings sometimes. Firezook seemed pretty far ahead, but now this fight was so much in uh, Flicky's favor as Firezook was attacking the base instead of the units. Flicky's able to get a few more kills than his opponent would like. Uh, but fully mining base here, already fully mining, got got the upgrade as well to get to 8 fully mining workers. And here comes the Icors jumping on top of it. These units. Gonna get a, a camp, and Flicky's just getting his opponent out of the way. Okay, and here we go. Here's here's the Godhorn on one side, Godhorn on both sides, and bone double bone canopy on this side. Only one bone canopy, so there's gonna be an advantage in the air for Farzer. But Flicky started a bit faster on his production. Double bone canopy though is a big advantage. Not sure if he has enough ether to really produce it. Yeah, he got his free for free for Moss. Uh, Flicky might be in trouble. This is great for his opponent, going faster on on the areas. I think he needs to do some damage here. He needs to uh, try and get in and stop his opponent from mining. I love this uh, this run by with the, with the I cores. He's get as many workers as he can. Does he get enough? Oh, he he almost gets the whole line. He gets five of them. Five is pretty good. And on this one, he does get the full line. Uh, although the Frums are out for his opponent, and with two bone canopies, double bone canopy, that's gonna be hard to keep up. Flicky needs bone canopy as bone. He's yeah, he's getting a second one, but that might just be too little. He's gonna have to build something else. He, he might need to. Build some anti air places, and he already does. As I mentioned, he builds anti air at all his bases to make sure he can survive the, eye, the from attack because there's just so many more froms for his opponent. Yeah, he might just be forced to to build some bone to, to build some bone stalkers to just survive this push. Icor's though on his side doing a lot of damage, able to get on, on his opponent's face. Icor's speed is research for for fire drugs, able to get on top of it. Zo comes in to try and uh, slow down those units. Uh, if only he had some underspines to slow him down as well, but he doesn't need need those. Zo is still level 3, chases his opponent away, keeps his bases running while he gets his bone canopies up. Getting Aerox now. So Aerox are going to be the exploding suicide bombers on those frums. So if ever Firezord tries to engage, he'll be in trouble because those Aerox are so powerful. I wouldn't be surprised if Flicky has more experience in these uh, type of battles. Firezord though... Firezord really going strong on the units, has so many more units than... So many more units as his opponent, it might just come down to, to the air units at this point. And yeah, Flicky keeps sacrificing his units to try and get some more damage. He always gets a bit, right? He always gets a few workers. It's always, is it enough workers that he gets? Uh, with more armor though, Flicky could, could have a pretty good advantage of armor. His units are just going to last much longer in these fights. And yeah, okay, I love this from Flicky, going for counterattacks all over the place. Farzog sees it coming, he's gonna have the defense, but not before he loses at least a few workers, right? Oh, Flicky bringing in his Zoe. Gonna try and get some Zoe kills. Uh, oh, okay, Zoe was not shooting enough there. Yeah, Empowered Strike, but there's not enough units here. The Zoe is powerful. On the other side, yeah, okay, the Frums are doing their damage. Zoe still on level 3, but there's so much power for Flicky. Oh, of the Aerox here, you definitely have to be careful here. Ooh, one explosion of the Aerox. And Flicky gets the gets the from lead. Flicky's showing that he has played this matchup more than his opponent. Getting on top of it, gets the shots. Aerox jumping on top from just trying to escape it. Going back to the Grove Garden. At that point, Flicky has no reason to follow. But he can go down. Oh, there's another Grove Garden here. Always the, the offensive Grove Guardian. Actually, okay, doesn't get the Aerox. Oh, more, 
Oh, the Arcs here. Oh, the Arcs get on top of all the fronts. Then he gets on top of the fronts, but Flicky's not the kind of right things. Flicky gets a Zoe of his own and tries to attack, but the Zoe is going to be focus fired down. And yeah, the Zoe got focus fired down immediately. The Zoe is not able to get to level 3 4. I uh, gotta be careful on Fire Zerg's side here. The Arox is coming in. Of the Arox, you always gotta be careful. Another big attack from the Arox gets at least one of them. And a big, big from lead. The murder of Frums of, is just murdering more than his opponents on fire, on on this side. Finally going in for an attack. The Frums are coming in. And there's probably a hunting grounds here. As the Arox can uh, sacrifice himself top of the units. Flicky tries to keep pushing forward, but with the reinforce coming in, you can't just keep pushing. Not enough units. Flicky's gonna be in trouble with his third base right now. Flicky does have his fourth base, but not up and running as his opponent. Firejerk slightly ahead economically on his opponent for the longest time in this whole game. Underspines coming in to slow down the opponents, and with the Frums here, there's no choice but for those units to retreat. And he doesn't want to follow him too much as the Frums are ready to counterattack at any moment. At a moment's notice. And Flicky sees it's gonna jump in. Aerovore doesn't have time to quite be built up, gets destroyed for a death. But there's enough Aerox here. Oh man, the Aerox get a big shot in. And might just be enough. Flicky cast his great hunt. He wants to get on top of this. All his units get faster. With a faster, he's able to jump on top of them. And the Aerox kill the Frums. There's no more Frums on his opponent's side. Or at least here. Are, there, are all the Frums dead? Most of the Frums are dead, and Flicky wins the Frum fight with his Great Hunt, able to jump on top of the opponents for real. And all the Frums are dead. The murder of Frums have been murdered. And Flicky just wants to get a bit more power back. He's still ahead on the power count behind all of this. And a level 5 Zol. Flicky in a decent lead, I feel like. There's a bit more economy on his opponent's side, but all these fights have been in Flicky's favor, thanks to Aerox. And yeah. He has learned his lesson. He's getting Aerox of his own. The Aerox are ready to jump in. Model not completely finished, but you see their bag of poison. Ready to just jump and kill his opponent. Flicky's got to be careful. Flicky looking for other avenues of attack. There's a knight. I like this wall a lot from Fire Zerg. Love always seeing people building walls. There needs more walls to be built. This time it's only Aerox on his opponent. There's no frums at all. Okay, he needs to be careful here. If a Great Hunt gets cast, he's gonna be in trouble as all his units are gonna be uh, jumped onto. Of course, Aerox on Aerox can still happen. Destroy all Aerox with your own Aerox. It's a classy scour Scourge versus Scourge battle. This side, Icor just coming in from all angles. And now we kind of see the power of the economy, right? Flicky has been sending his units in all the time to try and get some kills on the workers, but his army has it remains pretty small at this point. Uh, Firejerk probably was able to get a few more kills here and there. But yeah, just Aerox with one from. Yeah, um, you need your Omnivores, Flicky. Stay on your Omnivores to defend these. Oh, he gets all here on this 5th base, but he more needed it on this base on the, on the right side. Aerox are built, so that's gonna stop any type of units to come in and jump. You need your ground units to defend here. Uh, a Zoe comes out for... Zoe's gonna come out here for his opponent. As he comes in, the Frums are going to come, he's, get, he's trying to separate them, so the Frum, so the Arocs are going to go on the wrong targets. It's a smart move, uh, but might not be enough, as he wants the Frum to sacrifice the right pla wrong place. And yeah, separating his Frums between both bases. Behind all this, Firezerg has complete map control, is able to get his 5th base. Of course, this this is the 5th base that, that Flicky always had anyways. Yeah, okay, this is looking better for Flicky, able to get down on his opponent's level. Gets opponent's units down. Upgrade wise, Flicky is heavily ahead on upgrades. That might be a big difference maker as well. Finally getting a plus one attack, but Flicky has two armor extra on his opponent. His units can buy 20% slower. Of course on Arox battles, doesn't matter quite that much, but might be the difference maker here. If uh, Flicky's Arox can explode in his enemy's Arox without killing them, that would be great. Yeah, Flicky trying to all mode his opponent by sending units everywhere. Great move on his part. Post game is coming up. And yeah, Flicky versus Firejog is the only games left to be played as uh, Firejog tries to move forward. Ooh, Flicky casts. He wants to get on top of the units as soon as he can. Just gotta be careful of the Aerox. 
Oh, great hit cast for both units. So both, everyone's going to be faster. All the units are faster. And Flicky's in trouble here. His opponent's supply has doubled him. Flicky is getting all his units destroyed. He has nothing left. Flicky all lost his murder rums. I think he's going to try and rebuild as fast as he can, but he doesn't have the alloy at this point. He has a decent economy, but both Zolos are also highly leveled. Actually, it's a higher level Zol for, uh, for Fire Zerg for the first time in these series. Zol coming in from the back. I think he's in a lot of trouble trying to get his units up, but he's a third of the supply of his opponent. His uh, harassment was not able to pull through, as even though he won a lot of fights, the economy ended up just being stronger, as Firestar was able to power through, and Flicky is going to GG out of game number three. This series go 2-1 to one for Firezerg. Yeah. I'm quite happy. I asked for non-Aru non, uh, Mirror. I'm happy we're going to have Aru versus Croft. And I think that matchup works really well. There's all versus Jari, the two non-defensive immortals. Oh, not that Mal is super defensive either. Um, and Jari is not defensive either. They're both middle of the road kind of. They're not both super aggressive. I'm assuming next immortals we're gonna get. For, next immortal we get for our might be the defensive one, and next immortal we get for uh, for Croft might be the aggressive one. We'll see soon enough. Soon, TM trademarked, because we never know who ends up happening. So Ajari versus Zol, Pigeon versus Fatal Exit. They're both going through the center. Teapots are not going to see each other, making sure not to get stuck by that, by the tower core. So going around it. Both of them going for a very quick expansion. Ajari gets it a bit faster because you get more. Uh, since you sacrifice a moat to build this, you lose it a bit quicker. And yeah, uh, Pigeon getting ready for his. Legion Hall, going to build a, a, a small wall between the main and natural. All that's missing is someone going for a really fast turn. Oh, double Legion Hall, so not going to get any Aether at all. Going for fast, fast. He wants his Sipari on the ground as fast as possible. The other side, no Aether Surge either. Just going for the first building, and Sipari might just be aggressive here. A lot of Sipari about to come out. Of course, in these early stages, it's just about getting the, the first base up and running. Once he gets that first base, he is good to go. Free Sipari. There's the E for Surge, just to get the first tech building out, whatever it may be. Okay, it's Tarn. Oh. Darn, I forget names right now. Um... I forget names and I forget the look of them. I haven't seen Croft enough today. We'll see if uh, he gets out with Sal Shin or Zephyrus to see what building it is. <laughs> I'll see at that point if it's the Reliquary or the... I think that's the Reliquary. So he's going for Zephyrus, I think. Or maybe he just wants to go to the next level. It's hard to say. Zo on this side heading up for a few units. Getting hidden before hitting. Maybe Field Exit is also going to do the special circle around them. Always like seeing that. Use a little bit of power to guarantee. Get a little bit of power to guarantee you get your Zol levels really quickly. I think it's one of my favorite moves I've seen. That's some Santa, but. Of course, you might just want to upgrade this tower to a tower, uh, tower found to a full tower. Scouting, seeing, seeing the base. Salshin. Okay, it wasn't the reliquary. This is the other one. <laughs> Which I forget the name of. Here comes the Bone Stalkers at the back of it. Okay, so no so no big Ikor play. Ikor play can be pretty strong, especially once you have these type of armies. Numbers can run you down. Ikors are able to defend them. Said it could be some type of Underspine or Zakal. Zakals are very decent at dealing with this. Oh, as the part taking the first hit. Okay, the big thing now is that the Sipari are going to get the speed boost, and now you can surround them, get the first kill. Not quite able to, and after that session, they have to retreat. They lost their speed boost. They have to retreat a bit. And power is taken. Salshin getting ready to jump up on the next side. 
Now, I kind of like these uh, these scouts. You just want to see when your opponent is taking his third base. It's a, it's a really fun move. Of course, it's a bit dangerous when you want to attack or not. You know, of course, Pigeon is keeping his opponent's uh, his scout in his opponent's base directly, seeing everything he can about it. Top. I like this. Both taking a power power one next to the other. Don't know if he wants to get the the tower core immediately or not. And okay. Okay, he wants he wants to be sure he has a few zephyrs just in case. We need Saoshin ready to jump in. Third base coming up from Pigeon Wrench. Good good little move here, getting that third base up and running. Here comes the Sao, Sipari Sao Shin. Coming in from the east side, ready to attack into the base. Yeah, this is a great counter attack. These units are not too out of position. They'll be able to come in, but might be a little. There's going to be some damage done. Now, now this pigeon's going to have to have. He has, an, he has a spell that allows him to run back if he needs to. Uh, but yeah, Zoe's coming in, and pigeon has to run. He doesn't want to fight this. Zoe's going to be summoned, but not getting any kills is unfortunate. As that's how she's able to level up. And behind all this, Pigeon taking a third base. So Pigeon with a small lead from this uh, from this exchange. Even though he loses a few nits and is pretty far behind on supply, it's not at a point where it should matter too much. And try and get the Pyre Miner as well. Fado exit mostly going for the camps, uh, the free ones that you don't have to pay for. You might also want to go for the Pyre Camp here. Ooh, love it. Let's take his third base, takes the tower, make sure that if ever, sand, if ever Pigeon attacks here, he'll be in position to get back to it. This side, Pigeon with a few units coming and going. Yeah, a small heal and run. You gotta be careful with those as those. Those are always ready to do some damage. Yeah, okay. Upgrading the tower core is always... I like upgrading the tower core a lot. Helps. It gives you a good forward point to just come back and heal up before you go to your next hit. Especially playing as Croft, you kind of want these up and running. And, oh, wow! Triple triple Soul Foundry. Okay, he's way Mass Dervish. Mass Dervish is not great against taking the Zakalos, but for Bone Stalker, it's going to be perfect to counter them. Yeah, House Defining Saints is also coming down. So the House Defining Saints, he'll be able to... Uh, to get dervish speed and really jump on top of everything. Top of it is getting double upgrades. Don't think upgrades are... Oh, yep, upgrades are done for both sides. One upgrade at least for each side is done. We'll see when the next one comes up. And there we go. Up and running. Dervish, 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 dervish. Five dervish. He just wants Mass Dervish. Pigeon is ready to rock and roll. He wants whatever has big wings on its side. Even if it's angels with wings, he likes him. He's ready to uh, to push in. Little roller skaties. What's going on, on this side? Neurosite. Ooh, lots of underspines. Like this move. Also, Bone Canopy is ready if ever it's needed. And the scout here, always ready to deflect any type of damage. Oh, Whitewood Reapers! We barely saw the Whitewood Reapers, but we're no longer here. They gotta be careful if they wanna go to the back and attack that base on their own. Salvation being cast by a pigeon. Ultimate spell being cast. He doesn't want to lose Zarya, but he's jumping into the into the attack. Zoe's gonna come out from Fatal Exit. Pigeon attacking with all his units. It seems he just has so much more in his opponent. He's overwhelming them. Any unit he loses is just gonna be revived right now. So he didn't lose any unit in that fight. Well, Fatal Exit lost a decent amount. Pigeon went pushing to push for pushing forward. 
has some Cell Shin to try and heal up his units a bit. Uh, he's being hit at right now, but he can just jump in closer and closer. At the back, Whitewood Reapers are able to get into the, into Pigeon, Pigeon Surge, so he needs to do a lot of damage to go back against the damage he just took at home. But it doesn't matter, he's jumping in the Dervish on top of everything. Whitewood Reapers killing all of the workers. Pigeon might not be noticing it as he has no more workers, but he's taking his opponent's third. Whitewood Reapers take them. Is it, are they going to go for the main? They're going for every single unit they can. Cell Shin and Sapari being built by... Uh, by the other side, and, and are there enough units here to defend against against the big push by Pigeon? Gets a full surround as it calls. Perfect surround. We see the two layers of Sipari attacking through. Zoe comes out, but she's still only level one, not doing that much damage yet. She's going to be focused fire down. She gets a few kills, but is it enough or is it too little, too late? As Zoe does her best to attack into it, but she is taken down as the Sipari and Saoshin come in. The White Reapers are doing so much damage the other side, but they're finally taken out by the reinforced. The Sipari taken out. There's no more workers on on. Pigeon Wrench aside, they're built one at a time, doing its best. There's almost nothing left. And Pigeon Wrench getting into the last little drops, being on top of the production of his opponent. Uh, Fatal Exit seems on uh, on his exit from this game, unfortunately, as Pigeon is camping his opponent. The units spawn, units get killed as they spawn. Pigeon, uh, Pigeon units might not be quite enough, so at this point... He's gonna send some units back home, leave a few back. Probably not intended to uh, leave some back. Uh, but yeah, Fado Exit lost his third base, lost a lot of units and workers. But Pigeon might have retreated either too late or too early. <laughs> Here comes the Whitewood Reapers, Ray's do more damage. I love that people are using Whitewood Reapers to just surprise their opponents. Very fun unit. Was next fight? Yeah, okay. Time to get some more power again. Ancient is out, but I'm not sure if it always has enough units for it. But if Pigeon ignores it and lets him take it, he very well might. Zoe is coming out, but he's being attacked from the back. Oh, Salvation comes out from Pigeon Wrench once again. He doesn't want to lose any units. And the Ancient Fight, he knows how important that is. He doesn't want to let his opponent get that much power. He wants that power for himself. His units are coming from the back, coming from all over. Salvation giving them a speed boost. And Fatal Exit is surrounded once more. The Whitewood Reapers do a huge amount of damage on all those units as they respawn in their Ajari. Fatal Exit is a bit... He's going to lose the Ancient Fight at this point. And he's looking for different... Different path attacks. Gonna attack and go for Pigeon's turn. Well, Pigeon is too occupied trying to kill the Ancient. Took of Wars going on and Fatal Exit wisely choosing different path attacks. Gonna kill the third base. Wild Reapers come in, kill the base, and Pigeon is nowhere to be seen. His army is on the other side. He gets the Ancient. He gets 100 power. Just used one win the last fight, but at this point, he needs his units to survive as the Wild Reapers keep attacking, keep coming in. Still no third base from Fatal Exit. He's still on two bases, trying to do as much damage as he can, but is it enough? As Pigeon's full army is coming in, all the workers are dead again for Pigeon. And the Whitewood Reapers are siphing their... Is this a scythe? Looks like a scythe. Or siphing their way through the, his opponent's base, but it might be not enough damage. They get taken out. Zoe comes in, but Zoe is too little too late. She's gonna try and kill some units, but she gets completely surrounded and destroyed in the hill. Set. Pigeon rent uh, behind this triple expands. Always a move when uh, you're too busy fighting to be looking at your macro. So you're gonna triple expand behind it. Yeah, so the Ancient spawns at 10 minutes, and then every 5 minutes after that, first time gets 100 power, second time is going to give 150 power, third time, and it goes up by 50 power each time, so at 20 minutes it's going to give 200 power. So it's really, really good to get win that tug of war there. A lot of Dervish here, a lot of few Whitewood Reapers. Attacking the Grove Guardians, always a bit of a tough power position. Pigeon might just be wanting to go around and make sure nothing happens. But he has enough of another Salvation if he wants to. And here we go. Salvation once more. Pigeon jumps on his opponent. Try, he's going to get the Grove Guard at the very least. But decides it's not worth fighting this. All his units are going to die and come back to life immediately. Yeah. This is looking rough for Fatal Exit. Uh, he does get a nice counterattack against White Will Reapers. I love this from Fatal Exit. Always finding counterattacks. Poor Pigeon. Trying to just survive, but White Reapers just come up. Luckily for Pigeon, he triple expands, so losing one base is not the end of the world. Still would have preferred not to lose it, as Fatal Exit never took back his natural, though. Uh, never took back his third base. Just being the ultra aggressor, going for the natural, gonna get the natural. Uh, Pigeon, 
Let's not be happy right now. He's got some Zephyr. Okay, he gets some Zephyrs up and running. <laughs> and he's gonna get a few kills, but not before the White Reapers are able to get the base down. Then her Zoe comes in. Our free Zoe is able to take out a few Zephyrs. Is she able to get all of them though? Oh wow. We're going to get all the workers. I wish we had a worker loss count in this game, because this worker loss count hasn't been this high in Immortal in a very long time. He must have lost at least. I wouldn't be surprised if he lost 100 workers just from two bases. He keeps rebuilding it. They keep dying from Whitewood Reapers. This time he's going for the attack. Whitewood Reapers are going to spawn again, but they might just die again and again. Pigeon Wrench deals with them. There are only 30 supply left. They're about to spawn all at once. There's nothing left but the one spawning. He heals them up with the Salshin, and the units spawn and die. Goes for the base, and at this point, uh, feels like Pidget may have done it. He jumped into the attack, and all that's left are a few units that are going to be taken out slowly but surely, one building at a time. There's no more mining going on. Fatal Exit has no more mining happening at all. This 14 minutes game is about to reach its ending. Santa, uh, Pigeon just needs to kill the base. It will be going game number two of this best of three. And away. Goodbye, base. And let's get started. This is going to be our first Croft. Um, our first Croft mirror. So it's going to be Pigeon Rent versus Fado Exit here. Fado Exit as Orzum in the red at the bottom right. And Pigeon Rent as a Jari up in the Northwest, right north. All right, forgot we had that. They had to learn by the top right. I forget that sometimes. Here comes the units. The scout is coming in from the, from the bottom, the top, and not a fast expansion from Fatal Exit. I love it. Fatal Exit going for some type of rush. How will Pigeon respond to this? There are a few ways to, to respond to it. Separi are going to be pretty useful. He's even going for the E for Pigeon is doing the most. He is doing the most greedy build you can, and let's see if he can survive this. He is going for the E for Extractor, not even the E for Protection. It could be because he wants to go for Zephyrs and get that range advantage against Zentari. Can do, can work really, really well defend these type of pushes. We'll see if it does enough though, as uh, the Zentari will be coming pretty quickly. <laughs> you need to even proxy them though. Okay, getting the building. I need to remember names. A bit more power for Pigeon, gets the scout for free power. On the other side, units. Okay, building that up. Fatal Exit playing. Playing a bit differently. So Pigeon might might get away with his super fast expand and fast Efer on top of it. And he's getting even more Efer by doing Efer uh, Efer Surge there. Doing his best to come forward. Zentari coming out to north. Units are gonna die. And Acropolis is done for Pigeon. No base here. Oh, is Pigeon actually gonna win this one too? Oh, he ran. Oh, good win from Fatal Exit. He should even get one scout kill. Of course, the first uh, the first fire cap is gonna go to Fatal Exit. Good on him. Yeah, other side, Pigeon wrench. Not yet going for a power camp. He's still a bit worried about his opponent. He saw he went for double Legion camp before anything. And Magi coming out, so he's going to be able to get some range on his units as he jumps into his opponent's base. Okay, Pigeon feels he has time. He's going to go for his own Pyro Camp, his own Pyro Vent, get it up and running. As Antara keep building up. Salshin, okay, so Salshin are gonna let him jump on top of Zentari if he wants, get a full surround on them, and heal up at the same time. The other side, the Magi and Zentari are pretty powerful. But with both being on equal equal supply at this point, Pigeon took a big advantage of the game, having his earlier base and double double production now off, off of two bases. Fedox can't quite afford it with his much lower production, and Pigeon, big advantage already. <laughs> Fatal Exit didn't do quite enough to, to warrant uh, delaying his expansion with his workers. Maybe if he had been able to get steal the power event from from uh, steal all the power on the map, so he could get a very fast build or something of the sorts, and do a big, strong, dedicated attack on the natural, could have been interesting. A few different ideas you could go with with doing a very dedicated attack like this. And here come the units. 
Pitcher's going to want to get this base camp, but he sees his opponent is going to jump on them instead. Gets a scout immediately. Going to give his scout away. And... And I love that we have voice lines between the two immortals once they meet for the first time. Here come Ajari comes out with the first pyre. First pyre of the game. Ajari very much ahead on pyre. Uh, no tower though. Urzum is just going to keep towering up, get it as many towers as he can. As that's going to give him. Every tower he gets gives him a bit of pyre. Ooh, Absolvers. He's going, so Pigeon Wrench might just be going for a big Absolver push. Haven't seen that them quite as much lately, but once you get like three or four of them, the push gets really strong. You can just jump in on your opponent and. Yeah, they're just hard to jump on, to, on top of. It's all about getting the right position though. Can Pidrin get it? He's gonna try and get a natural of his opponent while building his turn. So build a lot of units and then attack into your opponent, try to do the damage that you've always wanted to do to him. Finish him off, kill him. Do the damage. Okay, jump out of the tower. Does he really just want the tower? What does he want to go for? Units are coming. He still has a lot of Heaven's Aegis on top of it, so if he wants to Heaven's Aegis the next to his units, there you go, he Heaven's Aegis, one of Sipari, and there you go, he's gonna, he's gonna siege right in front of his, uh, his opponent's face, and they want to get on top of the, of the Absolvers, but can they really, does Heaven's Aegis gonna drop up? Salshin are kind of out at this point, the reinforcements are gonna come much faster for Fatal Exit, but is it fast enough as the Absolvers are shooting everywhere at once, those, those Centauri, poor guys, are being completely destroyed and manhandled by those Absolvers, Absolvers showing the power of being, a. Uh, Trying why you want some zone control units in your army. And with this big dedicated push, Pigeon behind that is getting an extra base and it's going to be building a lot of units behind it to reinforce. Needs to build even more to be able to take care of this. Zentari are coming in, are going to be able to take down one of the Absolvers. And with some nice focus for are able to aim on the second one. Heaven's Aegis comes down to, to protect it. And good play of Fatal Estate is just going to. Uh, going to change focus fire on the other one for a few seconds. And then Heaven's Aegis comes back and just keeps his units alive. Fatal Exit coming in with the wrong units. Halwars are great, they do a lot of damage from afar. Cassie are not quite as useful right now, unless the Wardens come in. The Halwars, the big cannon from the sky, the, co the, the, fl the floating hovering coffins, doing their best to destroy whatever they can with their big shots. Yeah, are able to take down some of the Safari. And the final Absorbers come in. As the final Absorber is about to fall, the Separi reinforcements come in and they want to jump on top of those Howlers. Howlers are going to do damage for days as they jump on top of stuff. Right. And big advantage for Pigeon Wrench again, getting his third base up and running. Of course, there's a good defense there from Fatal Axe. It's going to get a bit of damage as he tries to run through home. Howlers finding more damage. More units being built, a lot more Zentaris, Zentaris of big, powerful beefcakes. Gets a power event, and you'll need it for uh, the next push from uh, from Pigeon Wrench. Pigeon Wrench, uh, despite all that, isn't as far ahead as I'd expect. Getting more towers is good for Fatal Exit, getting in position. Okay, all the pirate camps. Get as many paracans as you can. It's ready to move around. Third base of Pigeon is fully mine at this point. Fatal Exit finally going to take us to third base. But his economy has been fairly wounded from being so late on it. But I do like the, the Halwar play. Halwar is at the back, able to dish heavy damage while his main force is at the front. Pigeon might just want to be able to do a full surround of that if he can. That would be a pretty big advantage. Oh no, magic can be caught out in the middle of the map. Expensive units you don't want to lose. They're such great support units. And Pigeon going for the camp. And what does Felix want to do? Is he going to keep pushing his opponent or is he heading back home to try and defend against Pigeon's big push at his third base? Pigeon separates his army, sending his dervish to the natural, while his main force goes to his base and tries to kill it. 
and the Howlers come down, but is it too little too late? As the Magi are trying to heal the units, but they can't really get the base, and the base goes down. The third base... Oh, is it? Is it going down? Okay, it is. That would be crazy. Another side, Dervish killing all the units of his opponent. Pidgeot not going easy at all. Saying it is Dervish to do as much damage as he can. Howlers at the back. And we'll follow this. Fatal X only has two base to defend. It's not too much of an issue for him. I don't know what Dervish does in them surviving all that. Oh man. Pigeon finding his next victim. Centauri <laughs> coming in and out, ready to dish pain. Centauri and Hollowers at the back, slowly but surely advancing on their opponents. Uh, Fado doesn't look so good this game. Fado's done okay in the tournament overall. But this game he seems a little bit in trouble. I'm not sure he's going to be able to uh, start the next push. The Howlers are very nice. The bags, uh, the lot of units are pretty strong. The he Pillow of the Heavens is coming down. Uh, it's not really an entrenched position for, for, for Pidgeon. He doesn't need to defend this. So he'll just move back to his own uh, ground where his units get, get healed. Pillar's not going to do more than that, unfortunately, for the ultimate ability. He has another one left with all the power he's collected. And Pidgeon is still moving forward. We see the power of the Halloran at the back, shooting its moon, its sunbeam, or whatever it is, I'm not quite sure. And Pigeon's reinforcement is coming in. Pigeon wants to surround it, tries to get on top of the Halloran. He's tired of getting shot by the Halloran from everywhere. Halloran goes down as the rest of the army from Fatal X is about to get surrounded. It's getting a bit dangerous here. He doesn't want to get surrounded like that, but he is. All the units flop one after the other as they fall. Salvation is cast by Pigeon. He doesn't want to lose any units in this fight as he wants to make sure his opponents use. I'll die from it. As Salvation pushes forward, not many units are going to make it through this battle. As uh, the Ancient is finally cast at 11 minutes, it's going to be hit for the first time, and Pigeon is going to try and go for it. Upgrade wise, they're, they're both at plus one, plus one. There's nothing too egregious here. Both of them are pretty good. Yeah, Fatal's still on two base, they're Pigeon's fourth. Gonna make it quite hard, but the attack is coming. Fatal exit, catches his opponent out of position of Santa. As uh, Pigeon tries to get the Ancient. He's had barely any HP. He's gonna try and say, get it just with as few Sipari as Sipari can run back. He wants to get back to the base before the base dies. Dervish is actually pretty good at dealing with these light units, but are they good enough? As Pigeon jumps on top of it. Pillar comes down, this time a real one. Pigeon is gonna dodge it. But it's not just about that. The, the Pillar keeps to spread and does a lot of damage to opponents. As Pigeon tries to heal up, he has a full surround his opponent. Warden's even at the back. Every unit attacking into this bitch. And Fatal Exit's gonna have to GG out. This was the fatal blow to his chances in this game. As Pigeon Red takes this 2 0. Yeah, Hallowers are great at the top. He did a great job there. I think it's one of the. I think. I think, like, uh, Hallowers is one of those sounds that really feels amazing. It just feel, you just feel when you're centered, it's like. Whoosh, whoosh, the big explosion happening. It's really nice to hear. Okay. Here we'll expect two fast expands exactly. Both. Moats coming in and gonna expand at exactly the same time. Gonna try and hit the 450 exactly. And then and then that's when it varies. As uh, especially in Orzum versus Orzum, there's no really reason to not do that. Unless you want to proxy some things. Both the scouts coming in, there's no really reason to proxy. You have a scout that's gonna see stuff. So you see your opponent expanding, you're happy. Is is he being cheeky? Oh, okay, not that cheeky. I don't mind this creating a wall here. It's still close enough that you can reinforce and reinforce a bit your your offense a bit quicker. Uh, it does expose it a bit to danger, but with a tower core here that you're sure to transform into a uh, into a, a full on tower, you don't really have to worry about losing it to anything. It's a fun little move. On the other side, fight. Ooh, Superman wins the t the scout fight. Okay, double E for search. 
Double Weave for Surge for Jack Attack. And no Weave for Surge at all on this side, so he's just going a lot of Zentari to begin with. Then he'll decide what to tech into afterwards. Yeah, so Double Weave for Surge into Triple Legion Hall. It's gonna be a question if he goes... Is there a tech tree here? There is a tech tree. Ah, Monastery of Izer. That's the one I forget. Reliquary or Monastery of Izer. Nice. Thank you, game, for helping me figure out the building names I forgot. Actually, I did forget another one. Let's look. The tower. Citadel. It's just a citadel here. Cool. I know my stuff now. So yeah, since it's a citadel now, he's going to be fine. So he's going to help defend. He gets range attack here, plus citadel just shoots lightning at everything. A lot of Zentari. Uh, it could be a bit of a question of who will take their third base first. Um, it, it does get put you in danger about some attacks. So that's not too bad. So there's a Monastery of Izer. So he's going for Zephyrs. I like that. I like a lot of Zephyrs to begin with. Especially in this mirror matchup, Zephyrs are pretty fun. Here are Mad Zentari. Although Zentari are still generally better. Yeah, Zephyrs. Mad Zephyrs a vibe. Okay, he did end up getting one E for Extractor, that makes sense. I was wondering if you would get any E for Extractor to go with it. I love this I love this Orzin play, just make a bunch of units, go on the map, get as many power caps as you can, and just do the damage you want to. While expanding, still sticking on four workers, wanna get eight soon. Gotta keep on working forward. Yeah, more more typical uh, reliquary so you can get your magi. Two different paths to uh, to go up to you up the text tree. Other side. E for extractor. Double E for extractor already here. So it's gonna be what new this okay, more Legion Halls. I was kind of expecting a soul foundry. Um, especially with that much E for it's you can build a lot of magi to help you survive. At some point you probably want some uh, you want to go to the soul foundry and four yeah, four is pretty good. Four Legion Halls before moving to the next one, that's a lot of supply on it. And you can keep building. Side three of them. But Zephyrs are more expensive, so it's fine. Little crossbow guys. I love the crossbows. Or it looks like a crossbow to me. Just spread out your wingtips and throw out your soul into a, into an arrow shot. There's a soul foundry. Now soul foundry, the two choices are going to be Dervish or Dervish or Absolvers, or just just to tech up to the next level of tech tree. I've seen a lot of people just tech straight to air as fast as possible. Uh, definitely not when you're going mass Zephyr like this. But possibly when you're going for something else. It's interesting because Superman has really been teching up. He's been getting a lot of the map. But he hasn't gotten that many. Okay, he's got two tower cores. Two tower cores each. Okay, it's pretty uh, pretty equal in that sense. The Superman has been farming that power like crazy. Uh, by going Zephyrs like that, you can be a bit more aggressive at some point. Uh, but it's a lot more micro-intensive. So getting that, that power fan is pretty good to begin with. It's a good start. Superman's getting ready to come defend it. Oh, is it going to be enough? Zephyrs are here. I hope they have Windstep, because if they get surrounded, they're in big trouble. Oh, he's able to surround two of them. Windstep's out. Good job, Jack Attack. Not losing those. That would have been, <laughs> that would have been painful. Oof. Scary stuff there. Okay, House of Sating Saints. So that might be for Dervish speed. So we might want to get fast Dervish around the map. Jack Attack. Uh, still not taking up much, much further. He's getting attack upgrades. Or defense upgrades. Getting upgrades of some sort. Both just getting their pyre miners up and running. Uh, pyre, pyre vents. Sorry. Yeah, I like this. Getting more, as much towers as possible. He doesn't have as much pyre, but his pyre generation is going to be crazy. Look at the pyre going up when he's doing nothing. Just goes up by uh, so twice as fast as, as his opponent, really. Yeah, Superman needs to get more more towers at some point. Or just destroy his opponents like here. I kind of like it if he just jumps on that and destroys this. Uh, heads back home. Uh, Jack attack. Getting ready to take even more control of the map. Okay, there's the mass Hallowers. Alright, House of the Saints wasn't for the two I mentioned. It was for Hallowers. He's getting up to six, seven Hallowers. Okay, that's kind of crazy. So Hallowers are great, especially in conjunction with the Zentari. Because when they shoot their shot... They create a hallowed ground, which gives Zentari so a ranged attack. So a mix of those two is really great. The biggest weakness of them is that they're they don't have that much HP. So if you can jump on top of them, you're really good. 
But it's entirely perfectly uh, complement that. The weakness of this army is that it has no anti-air. Uh, but uh, there's not really anything anti-air. Okay, there's the double edge other, as I mentioned that. Which is honestly a good counter to this. He's gonna jump right on top. He's gonna try and snipe them. Snipes one of them. But has gotta be careful. There's entirely not getting on top of him, so that's good for him. Sniping the Magi is pretty good. Sniping one Magi, sniping a second one. Three more powers coming from the back. This isn't a fight for... This isn't a strong fight for, uh, for a Superman. What a composition. Coming in, doing extremes amount of damage with six hours. And now he's going to keep pushing. He's going for the, set, for the third base. Or zoom only on third base. He might want to cancel. I'm not sure he has enough units. With no, He does not have enough units. That is confirmed. Yeah, he cancels immediately. But a push is coming. The Superman push is still coming forward. There's four Angel Airmen on the way. It's a good move because there's just no anti-air here. Uh, he's going for Absolvers. Absolvers might not be able to deal with this. Yeah, just sticking back right now. Ja Superman is taking it slow and steady. Just moving forward with his Hallowers. Pushing and pushing and pushing. Okay, here come the Scepters. The first Scepters are going to come out. They're going to be able to help deal with this. But is it going to be enough? Or is it going to be too little too late? There's some Centaurion of, of his own for Jack Attack. Trying to do some damage, but... The long range or the short range, plus the Magi healing makes it really hard. I like the Absolvers at the back, but they're going to be hard countered by the, by the Hallowers. That's their whole... That's their whole point, really. Superman needs to focus fire down the Hallowers. Uh, the... There we go, he's focus firing them down. That's how you deal with this. Yeah, if Jack Attack can get all of the Magi, he might be in a good position here. Okay, there's the Scepters, there's only a few anti here. Scepters coming in. Yeah. He goes for the first Magi, then he can focus fire these units. Hallowers getting into Absolvers. Pillar of the Heavens coming down from Jack Attack. To try and help defend this. He wants to keep his base, but it's going to be focused fire down the Scepter. He's going to be able to deal with this army eventually, but this takes a lot of time to get there. Jack Attack just does not have enough Ether to build more Scepters, as many Scepters as he'd want. That's the issue right now. The Snatcher goes down, and Superman is ready to keep going forward. He's attacking it. <laughs> yeah, our Chicken Ballistas. Chicken Ballistas weren't enough. And he's going for the Juggler. He's going for the Throat. There's going to be nothing left of Jack Attack as the final base is getting taken care of. It's being focused further down. He does not care about anything. Jack Attack trying to get some units out. He doesn't have enough money to build a base anywhere else. If this base goes down, it's going to be end of the end of the line for him. This Superman is willing to sacrifice all of his units as long as he gets the base. It's getting down to its last stage of health, and it's done. The GG comes in. Superman with a strong two-base push wins it over Jack Attack. Okay. We are in game between the two Sun Spear Games develop developers. Two developers of this game are on the bottom right. Jack Attack in the red playing as Orzum. Top left, we have Superman playing in the blue as Orzum as well. We have an Orzum mirror. Both of them going for a very fast expansion. Right? Yes, both of them going for a very fast expansion. And sending scouts around to figure out what exactly is going on. And is it, is it a fake expansion? It very well might just be a fake expansion here. Jack Attack bringing up his uh, proxy builds. He's going to proxy Legion Hall. Two of them. Ooh, scary stuff there. But yeah, he needs this thing. He needs his opponent to think, Oh yeah, I'm going for something completely traditional. But no, Jack Attack does none of that stuff. He is going for double proxy. See, I almost wish sometimes he would place it closer. Just so you'd have the... Like if you place it just here out of, out of vision range you would have a hallowed ground that's given while building it. So that could be a, a pretty strong move. You don't expect him to build his stuff going there. It's okay, you don't need hallowed ground. You have uh, strong units. So is, it, is he going to cancel it or not? That's the next big question. N just not getting Eve. He's getting Eve on top of it? Damn, okay. I don't know what he's planning to build next. The thing is, he won't be like one of the big things about these pushes. You want to destroy the production facilities. You won't be able to destroy a production facility because it's right there. It's right. It, it's next to the tower, and the tower will protect it forever. Yeah, the big thing right now is that he doesn't want to. He wants to build all of his units as fast as possible, just so he can hopefully overwhelm before. Now, nah, there's two production structures for his opponent too. Okay, good. He didn't cancel it. That's good. So now the question is, what's... Is he building tech? Okay, no, just Legion tech at home. Makes sense, he gets more production over there. He doesn't really need it, but there's... There's already six of them here, it doesn't really matter. He'll be able to get some workers, which is always nice. One worker. 
But then he's fighting range against unrange. I'm not sure how he's going to make this work. I hope for him. Adorsum is the most defensive immortal for a reason. <laughs> He's still going strong. He is going for Magi. Yeah, of course, if he comes forward to his opponent, then he's in... I mean, he can always heal up his units. So it's pretty fine. Ah, oh, if he can go on his entire that would be great. Oh, I love this from him. Sending units across the map when he knows his opponent has nothing? Oh, that's beautiful. That's so cool from, from Philippe. Haha. <laughs> Yeah, because Jack-Tex units are all on the other side of the map. What can you do? Yeah, going for a surround is a smart move. If you can just get one. Yeah, he, he needs to go for a surround on the other side. The workers are going to be built, but they're not going to be able to do anything. Two Centauri are crazy strong. Oh, man. Jake Jack doing his best here. Yeah, Jack Attack is in a lot of trouble right now. He's going to lose both his production structures, which is the real pain here. On top of losing all his workers that couldn't be mining for the longest time. Maybe he has decent because he has, at least has units like working, but Alip is focus firing well. And Ooh, man. Good place for the guys. Yeah, I love this from Philippe just sending units across the map to force him to deal with it. And now, uh... Honestly, at this point, Philippe can just do the same play as last time, where he just goes Soul Foundry, get a lot of Hallowers, and just goes for a big two-base push. Uh, he beat Jack Attack last time because Jack Attack had even less to go with. Uh, this time, of course, he already has the Angelarium. So if it's just the Hallowers and there's no anti-air, he might actually be able to just deal with it with Mass Scepter. So this is a move. It is definitely a possible move. It's good until, yeah, Scepter coming out. Of course, now that his opponent knows, he can just get out the Castigators immediately. <laughs> Let's see what they choose to do here. As uh, the scout sees everything, he's going to see the Angelarm already done. It's a really good sign for him. He knows what's going on. Four is Antari moving around. Alright, okay, first scepter is out. I'm gonna try and do as much damage as you can with it, but look, instead of going for Hallowers, just two castigators. He does uh He's gonna deal with these scepters in uh, record time. Jack Attack luckily only went for one engine armor worth of them. And he might just keep his opponent in his base, which is the other important part here. Considering how few supply little supply he has. I don't know if he saw it move out, but if he did he's gonna be able to move it in and get some free damage. Getting that power up and running. Superman minute, 200 power. He's going to be able to play, place a pillar wherever he wants. So Foundry. So he's probably going to go into his Halber stuff again. He already got the Castigators. Halber's going to be next. Going for a few units. And he might just get this around his opponent here. Okay, Emperor. Emperor unbroken. Doesn't want a tower to break. And he's coming just in time to take care of it to help defend. And the few units of Jack Attack don't really stand a chance here. Jack is going to try and take it down, but Emperor Broken also heals it up for slightly. He's thinking what Scepter on the expansion here, so that's very good. Uh, doesn't look, I'm not sure if he moved his, uh, his workers there. He might have. 
Jack tried trying to move back, but at this point, with free castigators, he needs to snipe those before he can do everything. Seems like Philippe is just gonna send it. He's just gonna send, attack the army, and with free castigators, he should be able to take care of free scepters. Or at least that's the hope and the dream. Uh, the scepters really need to take care of those, uh, of those castigators, but man, the castigators shoot those cannon shots. Oh man, close poor scepters. Third one's coming up. And with the heal on top of it, there's nothing really going on here for Jack Tax Way. And it's gonna be game over with that first base going down. There's one more base to go, but Jack Tax's gonna call it. His rush did not work at all. And uh, poor man takes a 2 all over Jack Attack. So these two guys are gonna be interesting because how quickly do new players learn, right? Compared to the last games, do you think uh, our old, our old playtesters, the playtesters that have been around forever, are that far ahead? And I think that's one of the most beautiful things about Immortal, it's how easy it is to really get into the game. Like, I'm not expecting from these guys the same level as Santa versus uh, Fire Jerk or something to like. Because those are the top of the top. But against more uh, players that aren't at the same level as uh, Jack Attack or the like, they can, they can keep up really, really well. At least gameplay-wise, I think it's going to be pretty similar. So, Scout and Symbiote. Okay, this is... Sending the Symbiote out is very interesting. We're playing Malo vs. Orzum. This is the first time we've seen this matchup today. And what does he want to do with this Symbiote? What? Okay. This is um, craziness that I love to see. This is beautiful, and I hope we see more of it. Uh, the thing is now, Fado Exit has a free Scout, right? He's going to come into the base and see that everything is late. I'm not sure if you could have noticed that everything is late because he's only been playing for a bit. Like, you can see this should have been built faster. Now, what's interesting here is that Aru does have the ability to move buildings from rootway to rootway. So if this finishes being built, you can actually build this and send it to the other side. And then you have, like, a free production structure on the other side, which is uh, something we haven't seen too much of ever. I've, I've, I've casted a lot of this game and I've never seen that. This is uh, some crazy stuff. Yeah, of course. You want you want to get the omnivore, so you're going to build that. So you can try and attack afterwards. As long as your opponent doesn't see that you have anything here, you're fine. And Fedor it can't really see anything here as, as long as this is not done. Okay, he's not going to teleport this one. But he could teleport the rest. If he was where. But I'm not sure he is. Fun stuff. Always fun seeing the weirder strategies come up. And you can see Fatal Exit is aware something is wrong. He is staying behind. <laughs> he is just building more workers. Go for Elkori just so he can get the Magi and help with those type of defenses. But yeah, his entire Magi can defend pr against pretty much everything. At this point, he wants to get the next base. Here comes the... Oh, come on. This might have worked better against another type of Immortal as well. Um... But yeah, proxy base is a classic. He almost went up to see it. I would have loved if he just went up to see it. That would have been so beautiful. But he just wanted to, uh, to change the target, the target fire. Oh, Come on, transport this to the other side. That would be beautiful. Oh, he just got detected. That's not good. That's very bad, actually. Like, if the omnivores were done, it wouldn't be as bad. But if the omnivores done... Yeah. Bring your mass hunters in. Yeah, he doesn't need to push in, right? What he can do is get some Aether, get some Soul Foundries. Just make sure the opponent can't get closer. There's nothing here that produces a uh, root way that makes it go further. So as long as he stays here on his two bases, he is fine. Uh, Rob the Birds is also mining from this base, which is can be annoying. He can build his own... Oh, Godheart. What does he want to do here? Yeah, Bloodwell. Okay, so you get to move it a bit further. Yeah, I don't mind more Zentari ma Magi, honestly. It's always a good tech. The real question is, what next? Okay, he's gonna build... What type of kookiness is he building up to? That, what I would think is just to go Hallowers at this point. You get Hallowers, you can focus far from afar these things. But you want to make sure you have enough units against a one base. 
which is always the thing, one base is pretty dangerous. As long as you have enough units, you should be good to survive. But yeah, this is... The thing is, it's a contain, but not complete contain, because you can still leave from here. So if you want to... Like, what we saw from last game with Jack Tech and Spurman, he just sent two units to the other side and just started doing as much damage as he could there. Okay, there's one Amber Boom. He's coming in. I'm not sure he wants to. <laughs> we see the animations for these aren't completely in, well, aren't in at all yet. They'll come with time. Where are you? Mass hunters trying to go in but don't really want to. What's he building? Incubators? Okay. I was not expecting incubators. Yeah, he's just moving them now. I like that. See, he just needs to move this one too. Okay, I don't want to like... It's cute more than anything seeing that that go for it. It's like, okay. That's uh, nice. Don't see if anything more is going to come from it. Dislike a lot getting his own control. Yeah, okay, perfect. Going for a house of the Fading Saints, that's perfect. Get it the Hallowers out. As soon as you get Hallowers, this is just. I'm not saying it's over, but. That's the thing, right? You can attack into this, but I don't know if it was worth it. I think, like, if you just stayed still and waited for the Halwars to come out, he's in a way better spot. That is the thing, neither of them could really attack into the other one. I, Like, with the spell of the Red Harvest here, he has a pretty good attack. The sooner Red Harvest is over, there's not that many units here. So now it's just, yeah, okay, there you go. Halwar, two Castigators, just in case. In case there's any out here. But really, this is just full Halwar. As long as you get Halwars, you're just gonna slowly but surely destroy this. <laughs> Didn't have to worry about anything. His opponent still hasn't expanded. Well, that's not true. He has expanded. Let's take a full base here. <laughs> yeah, let's go, Hallower. Yes, Hallowers. Get me some more Hallowers here. You can actually attack it while it's still processing. I uh, gotta be really careful there not to go too close to the cystic crawlers, yeah. Look, explodey guys. Explodey guys don't have much to do here. Really gotta be careful those cystic crawlers are so strong. And yeah, the thing is, you have the howlers, you don't have to push in at all. You can just stay back and just do some damage from the back. You're gonna kill everything eventually. That's the whole point of the Hallowers. Yeah, the Hallowers need to be focused firing the, the zone control units. Those are the big dangerous ones. Yeah, every time you get so close, you can see like the Brood Anchor is getting closer and closer, closer and doing damage. Bam, bam, Magi dead. He's just too close to his opponent right now. If the Cystic Crawlers can hit, that's where the danger is. Oh shoot! He's moving it forward to Brunecker, that's cool. I like that. Brunecker is getting closer and closer. More and more danger. He, he can move back here, they're still not attacking his base. He needs to focus fire on the Brunecker's. There we go, one down. Get the last two. As uh, the cows are fun. Omnivores are pretty powerful. Brunecker's are moving back, that's good. He <laughs> doesn't need to keep pushing. They're, all spend they're both spending it all on this fight. Trying to survive. Good attack there. Sister Crawlers are ready. Sister Crawlers are going to attack into those uh, Centauri, so you can't move too far forward. Just going to have those. Uh... Yeah, Magi are always fun. But yeah, honestly, a good number of Hallowers. You can go up to six, but more than that's going to be dangerous. Just supply wise, it's uh, pretty expensive. Bam. Attack, attack. The other units coming here, they're just gonna taking some shots from the Hallowers, and that's what we really want. 
We just want the halberds to take most of the shots here. The thing is, he has to aim for the for the things that are giving I that are giving blood that are giving root way. Oh, those were not gonna do it. No, don't go into the cystic crawlers. Don't move over the cystic crawlers. Cystic crawlers are evil. Okay, he got one of them. There's only four of them left. But he might be able to, to push through. He has a lot of stuff now, and Magi are healing like crazy. Okay, he got through all the. Yeah, he got for all the static defense. Right for the static defense is the big one. Once he does that, the thing is, they were both on two bases. The biggest difference is that the uh, Halwars are the big counter to this. So, like this fatal exit, he really found the right unit for for this fight, taking care of it. But this one is going to be very hard to survive this. I wonder if he'd be able to move this stuff now. I have to test that. Are you able to uh, deep tunnel the stuff away from this place to the other to the other base? Because that'd be fun. GG. Okay, let's go. Final game of this tournament. On the top left, we have Arrival of the Birds playing as a Jari in the blue. On the right, we have Fado Exit playing as Orzu in the red. Going, going once again for a Legion Hall first before expansion. It's not something we see that often for Orzu. Orzu feels pretty confident in his ability to defend any type of rush. Last game might have uh, scared him a bit, let's say. Especially with uh, with a Jari, you actually don't need to put anything anywhere special to. You don't need. You can proxy from anywhere. Oh wow! Double, double Legion Hall before expansion. You will play. I love. I love. I love seeing this from other players. Seeing different perspectives away from what others have been playing. No Efer at all here yet. Two thousand. Two thousand. Decide. One Efer surge. The scout's ready to fight the other scouts. Oh wow, this is cool. Well, cool. <laughs> um, it's cool because I think it's a mind game at this point. Like last game, he did such a committed attack that in this game, the third game, he's like, you know what? I'm going to do the complete opposite. I'm going to double expand before you even see anything. <laughs> It's kind of genius considering his opponent did not even expand, so he could just bring up 8 Sipari and attack him and probably kill him. But does not matter here. Does not matter. This is a game of mind games. If you can outwit your opponent just in the head and he does not know what's going on, you double expand and make a single Legion Hall, and he thinks you made a Legion Hall on your base or something, you're, you're ahead. That's what the birds are doing. The birds are singing false signals. Shouldn't listen to that messenger pigeon anymore. Just, uh,. In your own head, and you gotta scout around and figure out what is going on with this. <laughs> Man, if he gets away with this, yeah, he probably will at this point. If it was one base versus three, the one base for sure just makes a bunch of units, attacks, can take it out. But he's just doing his own thing here. He's just getting the pyre, getting his own stuff. He's gonna be far, so far behind of those two bases. Of course, any type of timing attack push could get it because there's only gonna be a few Sipari. And he'll have the power advantage. For sure. Hopefully. <laughs> crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. Yeah, East Race Tractor. He definitely does not know their arrival went for free bases like this. Where are the scouts? There's one here, just to defend. So he's placed him in places just to make sure that if the opponent comes from there, he's going to see it. Then the third one's about to pop. Yep. There's only two of them on the field. I think one of them has died for each player. Where birds? <laughs> he's not even playing defensive. He is going triple expand into setting up a forward position, forcing his opponent to defend him instead of attacking him. Love it. Keep going for the mind games. Fine. Are you going for upgrades too? Upgrades and reliquary. We really get all the units up and up, up, up and at him. I feel like what he's doing is pretty good in most games. Just get as much power as possible. Get on the map. Get the stuff out. He 
really... <laughs> yeah, really doing the crazy stuff to get all, of, all he can out of his opponent. All the mind games. Of course, at this point, Fado exit. Uh, the two base could hurt. Okay, yeah, fully mining. Fully mining both bases. He spent like 1500 on resource on just expansion stuff versus his opponent like he spent 300 he's spent a thousand more alloy than his opponent on the expansion stuff and it's about to pay off in about a minute or so it's gonna ha it's gonna be worth it he's still a bit behind on eco but since there hasn't been a fight yet it's a bit dangerous they're ready to fight they want to fight somewhere. They want to get there, but they can't. There's no one to fight. He just he's just saying to take map control of the whole thing. The other side around with the birds is expanding at half the supply of his opponent. It's about time he needs to be doing some type of explosion in his economy. He needs to explode his unit count, or this next fight might just be the last. Thirty-one to seventy-two doesn't matter. It does not matter how much economy you have if you don't have the units to support it. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> the double expand. Okay, good. He's making some units now. Oh, uh, but yeah. So the thing is, even if uh, Fado Exit detects this, he would think this is the third that his opponent took. And Fenray's like, okay, you took a third, that's fine. I can. I'll destroy it, and then you'll, you'll be only on two bases like me, and then he'll think of taking his third base. But that's not the reality here. The reality here is that there's also third base here. <laughs> oh man. Oh, and the counterattack doing so much damage here. <laughs> We're out of the birds coming in. <laughs> Halwars are here. Halwars are great at pushes. The committed push are coming. Double wipe grades. Are upgrades done? Not yet. Rival needs to make more units. <laughs> needs a lot of units now. Okay, not bad. Playing the Fire Singer defense. It's useful for a bit, but less so when. Um, once you do get those more powerful coffin units, the Hallowers are ready to jump up and send light from above. Go, final units. Absolvers are ready, Sapari are there. Yeah, really annexing the map here. So, one base his opponent did take. Of the birds coming all over, expanding all over. Yeah, Fedor said, you can fight this. You got this, go into that. You're gonna get it. Yeah, especially as soon as you get some hallowed ground, your Zentari are gonna push a bit stronger. Mining four, mining four, mining four. He's gonna go down, he's gonna see it, right? Yeah, he sees it. Okay, good, he can take this one. Is he gonna defend? Oh, his Halward's are to the front. Okay, Halward's good, he's moving at the right place. He's going up, is he going for the counterattack instead? Because no, he doesn't really need this space, he has so much economy. His army count is finally catching up, slowly but surely. And, okay, he's forcing the base raid. And Felix is having none of it. He destroyed a base, he is good, he killed his opponent's third base. He can now go attack this base over here. Oh man, the big counter attack. Might be dangerous, but Ajari does have to recall. If she does so decides she can just send all her units back. Unfortunately, you could lose a few absolvers on the retreat. Going for for the aloe line. Okay. Uh Fido is a bit stuck here. It's not use his Ajari recall. He's gonna get destroyed by those Halowers and his Zentari. Zentari going strong with all these units. And here's the recall, finally coming in, sending the few units he can save in there into the small circle. And there you go, back to this base. And they have survived. At least partly. 46 to 136. If Fado Exit is able to just jump into the main and kill him, he might be able to do it. The issue is, um, there's a lot of defense here. A lot of fire stingers. Probably not fully upgraded. If he just added two absolvers to this and just had him sit there, it's going to be so hard to break. The thing is, even if he breaks the, the main base, 
pretty sure Rival's goal right now is just to counterattack until he wins. There's no bases. Two Centauri. Two Absolvers. More Halibur's coming down. He actually, yeah, he has more than enough units to just take this. He has so many units. Actually, I'm not sure who's gonna take this. The Absolvers are great zone control units. If he jumps them immediately, there's the Heaven. Salvation comes in so he doesn't lose any units from this fight. Yeah, the two Absolvers are saved. A lot of Sapari are saved. But there's so many units from Red, not sure it even matters. He's just gonna keep pushing and attacking, especially with the Pillar giving him reinforcements. Units come back at the back. And Absolvers are jumping in as as the push happens. Uh, Howards are able to take it out. A lot of Hallowed Ground being given by that, that Pillar of the Heavens. Youths are reinforcing away from Arrival of the Birds. Arrival of the Birds has half the army supply and is going to have to give away this third base. And is going to be left with uh, the fourth and fifth base still alive. So both third locations are taken. Yeah, Fatal X can try and keep pushing. That's a lot of Fire Singers. No upgrades on either side. This man, Fatal think he did enough damage. And he did do a lot of damage here. Yep, Fatal going for the counterattack instead. He feels his opponent's gonna try and jump in, and even if he does, there are a lot of units to defend here. Just between the Absolvers and, and the Fire Sewers, he might have more than enough to defend this push. And on his side, he's counterattacking. He's gonna try and go for a jugular, go for the hit. And there we go, the Absolvers are sieged up. Another pillar of the heavens goes right down onto those absolvers, <laughs> dealing a massive amount of damage. He still wants to get closer to finish him off, but he seems to be able to push him through. This side, a of the birds are jumping into the base, he has to go for the main bases. He knows the opponent doesn't have many bases left at all. So many fire seekers though here, but the Zentari are more powerful than fire seekers it seems. Absolvers are being built at the back, they're gonna siege up immediately. And Fatal Tick might be able to do it here, but is it gonna be f fast enough? Before Fatal Exit takes out all his units. Uh, Zentari, there's not that many Zentari left, but still more than his opponent can handle. There's units being made, especially on this side. There's not much hand here, so Wardens are the right solution for arrival. On the other side, on the other side, Cassio has come out, but T don't deal with Sapari quite that well. Sapari surround them, take him out immediately. It was a good idea to get to go for those castigators though, as he saw the wards were coming. He needed something to deal with those guys. Or is it too little, too late? As Rival of the Birds comes in and still has a lot of units attacking into the base. As as Antari pop up. As Antari pop up, more and more units are, are jumping. Centauri attacking. Soul Foundry, not much, much, not much production left. <laughs> the, the Rival of the Birds actually do it with his four warrants going to be very hard to get in. Fatal Exit is going to have to GG out. It's a 2-1 for Rival of the Birds in this final series of this tournament.